Hi there, my name is Christopher and uh, I'm making this video because I think it's important to share what's happened to me in my life. Um, so let me, you know, <laughs> I don't even know how to start this video, honestly. Something's happened for me that is um, beyond Those are two huge hawks. Look at that. Those are two gigantic hawks that just f are flying around. That's so crazy. This is, that's so crazy. That's exactly, oh wow, that's so weird. Look at that. Those beautiful big hawks, it's so weird. This is exactly, it's so strange. <laughs> Talk about synchronicities. This is exactly, Oh my God, this is so important because this is kind of fits in exactly with what I'm about to tell you. God, I hope the camera caught that. So anyways, I'm, 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 I'm out here um, kind of in a forest area near our house. And uh, let me just kind of tell you a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in, on the West Coast in a very, in a very, very famous uh, family from the entertainment business um, and I myself am you know semi known but my family is like major major well known um, and I'm you know I'm you know in the middle of my life let's say and uh, you know I've been been married for a while for many years um, been sober I'm sober a bunch of years uh, you know, grew up in this in this way where both parents were well known. Um, kind of had a crazy growing up thing. You know, not a lot of peace. Although I had great parents, there was a lot of craziness that goes with that kind of lifestyle. If you can imagine, uh, paparazzi times a million. You know, people coming to try to kidnap us. Um, you know, a lot of scary shit growing up. Um, and all through that, you know, trying to be a kid and grow up and play sports and have a life and have girlfriends and, you know, my parents doing their very best to have careers and, and, and raise us as kids. Um, so that was my life. You know, I grew up on the West Coast. Uh, you know, uh, went to high school, went to college, you know, did all these things. Uh, I've, I've worked. Um, all my life, you know, I've, I've been in, in uh, uh, entertainment-related field all my life. And like I said, been married a bunch of years. And so, you know, basically, about seven months ago, uh, you know, in September, uh, I'm at our house. It's in the middle of the day. Um, clear skies. Uh, the city is delivering trash cans for us to have for our new trash cans for our house and I'm walking down the driveway and uh, I walk I get the trash cans I pull the trash cans up I'm carrying them up to the house and I casually look up into the sky and and I see above our house no bullshit a couple hundred feet above our house the size of a helicopter uh, n not making any sound what looks to be like a walnut the, it looks to be like a giant walnut the size of a helicopter. It's got pieces of metal coming out on each side like an X. Um, and I'm looking at this thing. It's a couple hundred feet above our house. There's no sound. You know, I know the difference between a plane and a drone and a helicopter. This thing is just basically hovering there in the air. No sound. And I'm looking at this thing. And... Uh, you know, I, I'm looking at it for 10 or 15 minutes, and I'm like, oh my god, this is, you know, actually shorter than that. I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, five or 10 minutes into it, you know, this is a fucking UFO. And as soon as I thought that, you know, and oh, before I tell you that, you know, so I'm looking at this thing, looks like a walnut hovering in the air, the size of a helicopter, not making any sound, has pieces of metal sticking out that look like an X on either side. I'm seeing the sun shine off one side of this thing. So I can see that it looks like metal with the color of, uh, 
you know, with the sun shining off one side, seeing that silver color of metal, the other side dark. So I'm watching this thing for five or ten minutes, uh, ten, you know, and then I start to think, oh my God, that's a fucking UFO. And as soon as I see that, so, or say that in my head, this entire thing lights up golden and, uh, and, and like LED golden color. And I'm watching this thing for literally like 20 minutes. And, 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 and the more I'm saying to myself, oh my God, there's a fucking UFO in my head, the thing goes from sh totally golden now, like an LED co golden color, to doing patterns of golden light. Like if you look on a, cu a com computer screen and you punch in sort of hieroglyphic sort of type of symbols, it's doing that on the face of the craft in golden patterns. And I'm totally fucking blown away. I'm watching this thing for 20 or 30 minutes, literally 20 or 30 minutes, and, uh, you know, and I'm like thinking, oh my God, this is fucking amazing, but yet I'm also thinking I gotta get back to work, and I'm torn because this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life, but yet I gotta go back to work. So the thing slow, slowly starts to drift off into the sky, into nothingness, and, um, and I, so, I, so I was totally blown away. I picked up the phone, I called my mom, you know, and this is a woman who I've been super close to my whole life, you know, and I told her what I had just seen, a UFO, and, and she was, and, I, and the reaction that I got was, you know, a concerned reaction, trying to be loving but concerned uh, and worried about me like I had just lost my fucking mind. So I basically tabled that conversation and we had, we, I sort of like, yeah, 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 it was great. You know, I sort of backed off of the excitement because I was shocked by the response. And, you know, I told my wife, she had the same basic response too. And, and let me just say a little quick sort of backup piece of information. About a year earlier or two years earlier, I had seen the Stephen Greer film Unigno uh, Sirius. And I was totally blown away by that film. Just loved it. I mean, really loved it. And uh, so much so that I had made con I made contact with Stephen Greer because I thought it would have his his life would make a great reality show. And um, so we talked and we connected. And I thought I had him a deal for the show, but he he ended up not wanting to do it for his personal reasons, which is fine. I totally got that. Um, and moved on. And so then a year later, I see this movie, the next one, the Unacknowledged movie, which even blew me away more. And I totally, absolutely love the movie. Um, sorry, I'm here. There are people walking everywhere. So I totally love the movie. And, uh, and I remember in this movie where he teaches you to do like a meditation where you're vis envisioning yourself in space and... Um, and seeing yourself in space and then kind of sending out a loving message to, you know, ET UFOs and then visualizing in space, showing where you are in space and then going down to like the world and then America and then Southern California, that kind of thing. And so, so, um, so when I had that, so cut forward, like, you know, a year later, I'm having this experience, which is totally blowing me away, right? Um... So the next day, basically, I, uh, I went out and I bought myself a laser pointer, which is something that Stephen Greer suggests to make contact. And I remembered the meditation. And so I'm basically, I go out that next night and I go outside of our house in our garden and I do the meditation and I do the little signal uh, of laser in the sky and uh, holy fucking shit, but, you know, like 10, 15 minutes later, I'm having these flashes in the sky, again, the size of a helicopter, like a perfect circle, like one, two, three, four. And then, and then uh, I'm like totally blown away, excited. I yell for my wife to come outside. She runs outside. And uh, this thing does 10 or 15 more flashes. And she's looking at this thing going, I don't know what this is, but uh, I'm going inside. And she was freaked out, you know, which I totally get. Um, and so I'm just like, on, you know, completely amazed and uh, just like totally blown away. So basically, um, this, so I was so on fire now because of that.
you know, it's those two experiences. Because I have never in my life had experiences like that. I have never been a paranormal guy or a science fiction person. I mean, I like Star Wars, you know, these kind of things. Um, but I never was a conspiracy internet guy, uh, you know, video guy, you know, dark forces kind of person. I was always, you know, kind of like a spiritual person, but not super spiritual, not religious, uh, like Star Wars, but not was, that was about the size of it for me. Um, so basically, I was totally blown away by those two ex experiences. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, and I wanted to have more contact, you know, and I had bought this laser pointer. So that was, so that, those two things happened in September, those two days in a row. And then basically what happened was that after that night, literally almost every night I was having, uh, these contact experiences where I would do the meditation and I would do, um, the laser pointer and I'd have the craft fly over literally and do the signal now see these hawks in in the sky right there since this has started happening there have been hawks literally everywhere I go and there have been hawks literally like flying I walk out of my house and I swear to God this happened this have a bunch of times a hawk would fly literally over my head touching almost my head with its claws and flying in front of me and 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 in some of these experiences the craft I would see like a shadow of a craft and it would be in the shape of a hawk and 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 when we just started this video these two giant hawks were in front of us and now there's one in the sky right there I hope you can see it um, I hope you can see that but they're everywhere. And I really think hawks and owls are connected to these things. Um, so basically, this has been happening every night. Uh, it ha started happening since in September and would happen every night. And, uh, you know, I would have to do the meditation and do the laser thing. And... Um, but then, but then, and I would always go out at dusk, you know, but then what happened is uh, after a couple months of that happening, it kind of moved forward. And then I ha didn't have to do the laser pointer thing or even the meditation. I would just literally go outside at a certain time and I would think to myself that I wanted to make contact with them. And I swear to God to you, literally, it would happen. Uh, and then it started moving forward. It started moving forward where... Um, the craft wouldn't signal anymore, but they would fly like maybe a thousand feet in the air. I'd see a craft zip across the sky and then something would pop out of it. It would be like a golden orb would pop out of it and fly all the way down from the top of the sky, a thousand feet up, literally over the top of my roof. I'd be sitting in my, standing in my driveway outside at night. This thing would f literally come all the way down to the top of my roof, about a foot above my roof. And it would sit there with me, you know, and for about a minute, and it would slowly go uh, invisible, but I could tell they were still there. There would also be white orbs that would, like, do that, too, out of these ships. And, um, and there would be some, like, pale sort of blue ones. But, you know, the most amazing thing, I mean, it's all amazing, but one of the most amazing thing is when you'd sit there with this orb, you would be hit with this emotion, like... Just imagine the, the most intense loving feeling that you've ever felt in your entire life times a million. And in that emotion, I mean, you'd be hit with this emotion where you felt so loved and so ta and taken care of and safe. And, you know, that would happen. And at the same time, you're terrified. You're, you, you, I mean, I was so fucking scared that I thought I was going to get eaten or taken away. I didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. But, but in this emotion would be information that would be laced into the emotion. So you'd get hit with this big hit of emotion, like you were almost intoxicated from this emotion. And in this emotion would be images and would be information. Um, and I'll talk about that later in other videos, but uh, it was crazy. And so that went on for, it's been going on for now seven and a half, eight months. That was the first three or four months. 
and then it progressed even further from that point where you know they would now I wouldn't have to signal them or meditation or they wouldn't even signal themselves they would just basically come down as an orb and then start to do all these crazy things like I'd be standing in my driveway and literally like let's say um, you know uh, maybe 10 feet up 10 feet in the sky uh, from from this direction to that direction uh, literally out of nothing you'd see sparks like electric sparks and a fireball that looked like a comet the size of a baseball would be like go and fly, fly across the, the, your peripheral vision and that would be golden or white um, and all these different kinds of things were happening like that you know um, all kinds of bumps and bangs in the house uh, just ki all kinds of stuff and, 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 and meanwhile the entire time you're having a, you're literally getting these messages in your head um, it's not like a booming voice, but it's like this subtle sounding message, like a voice that's kind of in your own voice. And I ask myself a ton of times, like, this could be me, uh, you know, answering for myself. And, you know, again, this is all me assuming stuff. But, you know, whenever I would have these exchanges, uh, I would ask questions and they would answer us and we, not you know, and I wasn't, I was really trying to monitor how I thought. And the, and the responses would always come back, us and we, when I would ask these questions. It, it was, and the wording were words that I never choose. And so one of these days, about three or four months into it, I said, okay, if you're real, you know, give me something that I have no idea about that I've never heard. And uh, this word, I'm driving back from, you know, the ocean area to our house. And, uh, and this word pops into my head, biocentric. So I Googled it. I wrote it down. I Googled it. Never heard it before. And I wrote it, and I, I Googled it. And what I found out was, uh, you know, a couple things, which, is, which, which totally fucking blew me away, which uh, bio, the world's leading stem cell researcher, Dr. Robert Lanza, has just written a book called Biocentricism, which they're calling a genius piece of work, uh, reimagining humanity's connection with the cosmos and that how consciousness, everything is conscious and we are all connected and through consciousness man is connected to everything, opening the gateway and the doorway to the cosmos and beyond. I'm not giving it a good definition, but st something like that. And uh, it was, so it was exactly on the topic <laughs> and you know oneness and all these messages that I was getting and and it was just you know crazy um, this whole experience has been really isolating you know in a weird way uh, I'm not a crazy person I'm very sane but you feel really fucking crazy going through this because you can't share it really with anybody you know because you feel you know how it sounds you know how stuff sounds, you know, you know, you know all of that. And you can see the reactions on people's faces when you tell them stuff, when you dare to tell them stuff. It's just, you know, they look at you like you're a fucking Fruit Loop. Um, so basically, you know, I mean, and during this whole process, I was terrified. I would have an experience and run in the house two seconds into it and, th and you know, and that never came from them, it came from me. And I think I've gotten past that now, you know, and, and there's a lot more I can say on the subject, but it's, it's even advanced even more. And now, basically, it's all about consciousness. And, you know, every, I, I, you know, about a month or two ago, I started looking out our window at night, and I would see all these flashes of light, look like dark shadows flying around. And that went on for a week or two. And then I started seeing hundreds and hundreds of orbs that were these dark shadows. And that went on for a week or two, but not clearly. And then it got clear and I would see orbs. And I would see w this looks like animated whiffs of smoke flying with the orbs, flying around all my faces and my peripheral vision. Uh, I would see, start to see you know, dots of golden and green and red light with electricity sort of energy around it and all of this stuff with my eyes and now it's become to the point where wherever I look if it's a little bit dark I see these things um, 
And so, you know, my feeling is, is that it's a process that they take you through if you're willing uh, to learn. And then honestly, it's, it's not about spaceships or UFOs or things in the sky. That's just to get our attention and to kind of indoctrinate us into this experience. And I can tell you from my understanding, it's all assumption, that intention is everything. Um, meaning how your intention is everything in terms of having this experience or not. Um, there are no dimensions. There is no separation. They're not coming from some other place into our space. Uh, that's all bullshit, in my opinion. My opinion is, and this is assumption, that w they're here. We're all together. There are no, there's no separation. There's no dimensions. There's no this, no that. It's all together as one soup. They're here. Everything is here. All the energies, everything is here. But what it is, is it, it's about perception is that it's, it's, it's layers of perception that the person has to go through, consciousness, perception, the ability to see. You know how it starts is it's, you have to be willing to say, okay, what the fuck? Let's just imagine for a fucking second that even 2% of this is true. So you have to go out into the night and start out with that kind of feeling inside of you, intention. And then you have to be open to the possibility that maybe this fucking shit could happen, but with a real, true, honest intention. You go out like that with your heart connected to that sort of state of mind. And if you do that, then the doorway opens. And then if you can hold that intention, the doorway slings wide, wide open, and you walk through it. And then you start to go into this process of being taught about energy, oneness, connection, and how vital it is, you know, that to understand that we are all one, earth, sky, water, land, human, uh, animal, uh, beings from another world, energy beings, we're all together, we're all one, and we have to take a serious step back at how we've been doing things and really realize that um, it's vital to be conscious of every second move you choice you take to try to figure out how as a collective how to heal each other heal the planet um, realize that man does not have any kind of um, right or privilege over any other being whether it's a piece of dirt or an animal or a bird or a being from another world or the earth or the sky, these things are hugely important. I mean, that is my assumption, what I'm getting from these experiences. And it's about a biocentric philosophy point of view way of living. And that is really the message, is to delve deep into understanding what biocentricism is. Um, and to try to be, not try, but to definitely act and be in that way of being with everything around you, everything that you experience. And at the same time, open your heart and your mind to saying, what if I could be totally loved and taken care of? What if my brother could be totally loved and taken care of? What if we could heal Mother Earth? What if we could have no war? What if, if we could have all the food and water and everybody that needed whatever they needed could have whatever they wanted? What if there are other beings from other worlds or other, or I was going to say dimensions, but in this, in, this, in this world that we can't perceive, what if that's all true? Um, we've been doing it this other way where we're scared and attacking and war and we're you know, working off the principle that we're all separated and, and there's, n there's not enough for everybody. And we've been doing that now forever. Why can't we at least for one second try another path? Because what if, just on a bullshit whim, what if that's true? You know, why not give it a try the other way and not poo-poo it and not say it's fucking hippie bullshit or this or that, but just for a second, give it a shot. Because I think, honestly, guys, in my opinion, and again, 
I could be totally fucking wrong, but this is my assumption based off what I feel in my gut, in my DNA that is 100% real, what I'm sharing with you. And I'm not claiming to be some master or owner of the information or creator of any... I'm interpreting what I'm going through physically, visually, emotionally, and I'm just telling you exactly what I see and what I'm experiencing. All right, so thank you so much. You know, I just didn't put my face on camera just because my family is kind of a well-known family and I just didn't want to fuck with them and or my other family in any way because, you know, this is something that has happened to me and I, I as a person who I am, I can't turn my back on it. I got to share it. I got to be a part of trying to help. I got to be a part of the solution rather than the problem. But it's not their journey. Um, if they want to be on that journey, that's their choice. And they can make that choice. And I'm, I would meet them open arms. I'd meet anybody open arms that way. But I'm not going to put that on them by putting my face on camera and then having that kind of lead to a bunch of horse shit. So, you know what? I'm sending all you guys out there in the world love. I hope you're doing okay. I want you to be happy. I want, I want to be happy. I want to be safe and connected and protected and I want all of that for you too and for our earth and for our world and you know and fuck I, I grew up fighting and, and, and into martial arts and all that bullshit it's not bullshit but I mean I grew up some other kind of person uh, but this experience has really I mean I was never a bully or any of those things I was just a normal dude but you know I liked watching, you know, the fights and blah, 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 you know, so, but this experience has just kind of opened me up and it keeps on happening. And that's the weird part of it is, is that you have this experience. It's like, holy shit, from another world kind of experience. But then you have to wake up and go to work and do your taxes and eat food and, and, and take care of your wife. And then you start to believe, well, maybe I was daydreaming or it was fucking fantasy or who knows, I, I, you know, somebody slipped me some drugs or something, but then it happens again. You know, and now it's happened so much for so long that it, it's real. And so, and now I know every second counts and every, every choice we make counts and it makes for a better world or a worse world. So I really, I want for all of us a better world. I want for all of us, all of us to be one connected uh, family with everyone, you know. And so that's, that's the point of why I'm trying to do all this stuff. Um, all right, so sending you love. Hope you guys are good. Take care of yourself. All right, bye. Uh, orbs and I think bona fide contact, but also across and let's see, go up into the sky. And we see an orb there. We see two orbs right there above our house. And there's a third thing. And let's pan up into the sky. There you see another triangle. And let's see what else. We, as we just go into the sky, there's other orbs right there moving. Right there. There's orbs everywhere. Let's go up into the sky a little further. And we can see an orb there, traveling. There's a triangle right there. This is every night for seven months. And let's go up a little higher, up a little higher. Right there, look at that. And let's go up a little higher. Look at that right there. And then you'll see orbs fly right in front of the camera. Like that. They're everywhere. Look at that. Just Let's go. Another triangle. See that orb that just flew by? Look at that. at that. This is right in front of me. I'm 
standing in my driveway right now. Lost that one. Look at that. There's these they're flying every night all around our house. All in the sky. And every time I put batteries, I just put fresh batteries in this night vision camera. The batteries get drained within two minutes. Look at this. Look at that. go up a little bit higher and come back down a little bit right there let's go down over the roof another orb look at the orbs flying there look at right there and that's the roof above our house that's the tree There, do you see that? UFO drones, but they don't make any sound. You just saw one right there. Look at that. See, that was another one. They don't make any sound. You can't see them with your eyes, but you can see them on night vision. They don't make any sound. You can't see them with your eyes, but you can see them on night vision. So I don't know what these things are, but they're all over the neighborhood, and uh, and they co and they start when these military planes fly in, and that's when all this starts. This is outside my window, in our backyard. This is some kind of craft flying around in our backyard. Okay, uh, good evening. It's Grant Cameron, and I have uh, a guest. My special guest tonight is uh, Chris, uh, and I met Chris about, uh, I guess it's going back a number of months now. Uh, he contacted me uh, with a, a series of experiences that he was having uh, in Los Angeles area, Malibu, and um, it was quite a lot of stuff he was seeing. He thought maybe he was going nuts. I uh, wanted my opinion, and so I've sort of been in contact with him, and things have sort of ramped up. Uh, Chris is a uh, sort of a pretty well, comes from a pretty well-known family in L.A., so as we've discussed before, we'll ride the anonymity thing until it falls over, uh, because it, I think it will distract from the story. But um, So we'll just introduce him as Chris, and we'll go through his story. Uh, the messages and this video thing that has started. So we're, we're that's a project that's just starting. But let's start uh, from the beginning uh, and go from there. Uh, welcome, Chris, and thanks for taking the time to uh, talk with me. And thank you for coming forward. I know you're in a sort of a difficult position, uh, who you are, that um, you've sort of decided to sort of out yourself 
in, in a small sense. So welcome. Thank you very much, Grant and Desta. Thank you both of you guys. Yeah, I really appreciate, um, I really appreciate being with you, the help that you're, you're giving me and the, uh, you know, it's just really great to be able to connect with you about what's going on because uh, it's, you know, it's crazy, you know, I mean, it's amazing and wonderful and crazy, but, uh, you know, as everybody knows, who's kind of in this world, who has these experiences, um, you know, most people don't want to hear this from you. You know, they're just basically not interested. Yeah. So it's great to have an outlet to be able to share and connect with people. Thank you. Oh. Okay. And, and so you, in your life, you really didn't have any sort of bizarre experiences until what, six months ago, is it now? It's actually going on, I think it's like eight months now, but no, in my entire life, uh, never, never, ever, 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 ever. I mean, I have a wonderful, fabulous, kooky mom who's, who's uh, also in this world, but a great mother, uh, spiritual, you know, but not overly uh, into Chinese medicine. I mean, but that doesn't uh, constitute seeing ghosts or spaceships. Yeah. Uh, but no, and my dad is... Uh, not at all. My dad is like, uh, you know, a man's man type of guy in the entertainment world. Um, doesn't even believe, think, or ever talk about it. So it's just straight business and, 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 you know, normal stuff. So no. Yeah. That makes it a little bit tougher for you as well. Is that, and I think that's common with, with experiencers is that you really usually don't have much support around you. It's not like uh, everybody in your family is cheering you on. It's, it's kind of a difficult uh, position. So let's go back to how does this thing start for you? It starts, say, about eight months ago. Describe the, the, the situation. Yeah, I, I think it was, it was an interesting couple syn synchronicities that happened. Um, I had, prior to eight months ago, uh, you know, I've just been going along my life. You know, I'm, I'm midway through my life. Uh, hopefully, I live another 125 years. But uh, <laughs> you know, I, and so a couple of years ago, I, I come across the Stephen Greer documentary, Serious, and I watched this thing. And it wasn't like I had watched UFO documentaries prior to that. I mean, I have a friend, my friend Kevin Burns owns a company called Prometheus. They do Ancient Aliens and all these different shows. And I watch, I've seen those shows and I love them. They're great. But I wasn't like watching these things ever, really. I mean, if I pass them on the TV, then fine. You know, I'll watch them for 20 minutes, an hour, whatever. But that was it. My life didn't consist of thinking about this area at all. Um, that being said, I think when I, when I was a little kid, my mom gave me a book of the Billy Meyer thing, uh, which I thought was cool. Um, but that was it. So basically, a couple of years ago, I ran across a serious documentary. And there was a connection for me for some reason. I was just like, this is amazing. I mean, I was just like, you know, kind of on fire about it. And so I, uh, I called up my mom, who has a, you know, have a very deep, close relationship. She's an artist. Her husband's an artist. And I was like, you got to check this movie out. Showed it to them. And they were like, yeah, it's okay. I mean, they just totally had the opposite. And so I was like, okay, all right, cool. <laughs> so, so that was it. And I, I remember feeling kind of like, wow, that, am, I, have I, am I so off the mark with this thing? But anyways, so, but I, I loved it. And then I remember hearing that he was going to do another movie. And then I think I, 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 it came out and I saw it and I was just absolutely loved it. I thought it was amazing. So I was so now on fire after that uh, that I, I thought it would be a great idea to do a reality se series with Stephen um, on his life, you know, because he was talking about how all the, the government wanting to like kill him and all these different things. And I didn't really know much about this world. So I tracked Stephen down. Uh, we got together on the phone multiple times. Uh, I had spoken to a couple of people who run some of the bigger networks. And uh, I thought there was going to be a deal. And it ended up not happening because Stephen felt, you know, that at the end of the day, it wouldn't be something that would work in his uh, best interest because of the nature of, his, of this world. And so it kind of went away. So, sorry, I'm rambling. So basically... That was that, you know, but I had really loved these movies. So cut forward to, you know, eight months ago in September, um, you know, it kind of had faded from consciousness, but it had left a mark for me. Uh, and one day uh, I'm, I'm at my house 
and it's middle of the day. It's 12 noon, clear skies, sunny. We're having trash cans delivered by the city to the house. So I walk outside to go get the trash cans. I'm walking down the driveway, uh, I get trash cans. I'm walking up the driveway and I just casually look up into the sky and I see, uh, you know, um, like I said on the video, maybe it was 200 feet above the house. I see the size of a helicopter, uh, no sound, just sitting there in the sky, this thing, the size of a helicopter, it looks like, like I said, a walnut, and it's got these pieces of metal coming off each side, sort of in an X pattern. I'm looking at this thing, and I'm thinking, this is a, this is a UFO. And I'm looking to see, and I can see the sun shining off one side of it, the other side is dark metal. And as soon as I thought this thing is a UFO, uh, the thing lights up golden, literally, I swear to God, lights up golden, and I start to remember the Stephen Greer videos, like, you know, telepathic, this and that. And I didn't know much about it at that point. And so I started saying, hey, love you, UFO. You know, it's great to see you. And literally the thing goes from golden to doing these patterns, like, bup, 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 like sort of like different shapes and different patterns in this golden LED. So I watched this thing literally for probably 25, 30 minutes. And I'm sitting there going, I'm having this earth shattering experience, but I also have to kind of get back to work. I'm standing in the middle of my driveway. And uh, so it started to slowly kind of fade up into the sky, like a drift, and then slowly disappeared. And, and, and that was it. And, 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 you know, I called my mom right away and I got the reaction from her that I had never thought I would get from her ever. This is a woman I'm deeply close with deep conversations about everything. I was a drug addict for many years, always functioning, but I was, you know, super, I went through all of that, got into recovery. I mean, we talked about, been through everything. The reaction that I got from my mom was just like, I waved a turd in front of her nose. I mean, it was just like, I mean, it was like, oh, oh, okay, honey. Are you okay? Are you, are, are, did you have, you know, like, am I crazy? Yeah. So that kind of thing. So anyways, so I, I don't know if you want me to get into the entire drama of it, but that was basically how it all started. Um, do you want me to continue? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and Okay, so it doesn't stop. So what happens next? So you... So, okay, so let me condense it. Sorry, I'm rambling again. No, I'm that's so, okay. No, that's I'm, what we need. <laughs> to talk to anybody about this, especially you two beautiful people. So basically, bottom line is that happened... I called my mom. I had this very odd reaction from my mom, which kind of bummed me out. And I, I went, honest to God, I thought I knew my mom and I deeply, you know, I'm a pretty aware person. And the reaction that I got for, it was a real curveball for me. I was not expecting that reaction and it threw me. So I shut the conversation down in a lovely, polite way and got off the phone and went back to work and kind of meditated on what had just happened to that day, the reaction, all of it. And so that night I told my wife, she was almost kind of angry. She didn't want to hear about it. And this is a great chick. I mean, she's open, current, you know, vivacious, lovely, sweet, good person, open-minded, school, you know, very school person. But she was kind of like, again, it was like this, it was like this visceral reaction of kind of an anger thing. Yeah. So I was like, okay, all right, no problem. I don't need to talk about this. So basically what happened is that day passed, the next day. It's about 9.30 at night. I, I thought, okay, again with the trash, I got to take some trash out. I thought, you know what? I'm going to go outside and I'm going to try the Stephen Greer meditation thing where you kind of see yourself in space and yeah. you send out loving messages and you direct them down to where you, you were. So uh, I think what I, let me back up for a second. I think that day I had gone out and bought a laser pointer, a green laser pointer from the photographic store or the, the whatever store down the street. So I go out that night, I do it, I do the Stephen America meditation thing, I open my eyes, I do the laser thing right above our house, and literally 10 minutes later, I'm having big strobes of light, you know, like maybe probably, I don't know, uh, 500 feet in the air, perfect circles of these big strobes of light, like five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. I scream for my wife to get her butt out there, she runs outside. The thing moves across uh, maybe 30 feet to the west above our house, does another like 10 or 15 strobes of light. My wife is like, I don't know what I'm looking at, at but I want to get inside. This is too weird. And she ran inside. <laughs> and, 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 so, and that was it. And then it was done. 
And so basically, uh, I was like on fire. I was excited. And so basically what happened is every night it, it would happen. I, I would have these experiences where it was the strobe thing, where you do the laser thing, you do the meditation laser thing, then you get the strobe of light. And that went on for a couple of weeks, pretty much every night. And then what happened is it started to advance where uh, they would do, they would come, I would do the meditation, the strobe thing, and it would always be at dusk, like around 6.30, 7 o'clock, right as the sun goes down. Yeah. Then, then they would basically do this thing where they would do the strobe of light. I would do the meditation laser strobe of light, and then they would disappear. And then I would walk out into the front of our house. And then all of a sudden, I'd be standing in my driveway, 10 feet above my head from like, let's say, east to west, like in front of my peripheral vision, in front of my face, or so 10 feet above me, uh, like from east to west, from nothingness, a, you'd see a crack and a sparkle, like electric sparkle, and this golden fireball, like meteor, the size of like a baseball, would shoot across the driveway, 10 feet in the air, across my face, across my face, and go in and disappear with another crack and sparkle into nothingness. Uh, then they would do this, I call the Tinkerbell lights, where literally I'd be standing in my driveway, you'd see the craft flash, and then a few minutes later, you know, disappear, and then a few minutes later, all of a sudden you'd hear this and I'd look up, and you know when Tinkerbell flies and you see all the fairy dust around her? You'd literally see these pops of golden light and this fairy dust sort of thing. We have a palm tree above our house that's, you know, maybe 40 feet in the air. So it'd be like halfway down the palm tree in the air doing this like Tinkerbell thing, like light thing. I mean, it was beautiful, but it scared the crap. I mean, this went on over and over again. In the very beginning of these experiences, Grant, I, it would start and I would run at haul ass into the house because I thought I was going to get eaten. I thought I was going to take it away. I thought a probe was going up my buns. You know, I didn't know what was going to happen. And all of that fear was from me, not from them. Uh, it happened so many times, Grant, over and over and over again. Then I got past it. And basically that went on for six, seven months like that. Um, and then it advanced even more where like the craft would, it wouldn't do the flash anymore. I wouldn't have to do the laser pointer anymore. I wouldn't have to do the meditation anymore. I would literally just, I, I work out of my car sometimes, like during the day, like towards the end of the day, I'll make phone calls. I literally be sitting in my car because I kind of do it a lot, uh, making phone calls. The sun would go down. I'd get a weird feeling in my gut. I'd go outside. And I'd look up 1,000 feet in the air. You'd see this dot of light slam across the sky, literally cover the entire sky in two seconds. Then you'd see out of it would pop some kind of orb, usually golden or white. The orb would fly all the way down to the house. I would get out of my, you know, out of my car. I'd be standing in my driveway facing my house. It would fly all the way down to the top of our roof, like a foot above the roof, hover there. I would be hit with uh, the most loving, profound, love compassion feeling that i have ever felt and 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 the interesting thing is interlaced into the emotion would be information and it wouldn't it would be like an image or it would be one complete thought that was a very complex thought i don't mean like things like building rocket ships yeah. but more of a thought about humanity more of a thought about love connection more of a thought of like in the, those kind of things. So I had a, a bunch of those experiences where they would, and it wouldn't be a long thing. They'd come down, sit for literally a minute. I'd be hit with this feeling. I'd, I'd, I'd ask maybe a couple of questions. A lot of time I was scared, but kind of in between feeling this loving feeling, scared, all these different feelings. You know, so I got all past that. We did that for a little while. Um, Probably a couple months into it, I'm backing up a little bit. Um, I'm driving back. This is after a bunch of experience. I'm driving back from the beach to the valley. I'm going through Topanga Canyon. And I said, okay, if you're real, give me something. And I, I, all of a sudden, a word came into my head, biocentric. I had never heard the word before, ever. I wrote it down. I Googled it. Uh, I had found out that, uh, you know, what it meant, uh, and, but more important, not more important, but it, as important, Dr. Robert Lanza, the world's leading stem cell researcher, had just come out with these books called Biocentricism and Bio Beyond Biocentricism, which basically is 
you know, how everything is conscious, humanity's connection to consciousness, uh, opening up the gateways to the cosmos and beyond, and I'm not doing it, but so it was this, and the definition of biocentricism was like, uh, all, everything is conscious, all beings have equal value, man doesn't have the inherent right over any other being to dictate any kind of sort of like uh, process or, or killing or whatever that we're sort of all connected and, and it's, it goes deeper than that. But it was a very profound thing, exactly what I was getting from this experience. So what I got from that is they wanted me to do a documentary about Dr. Lanz's work about biocentricism and consciousness in general. So I didn't know Dr. Lanza. I don't have any relationships in the scientific world, but because we have this family and, and this, you know, business entertainment, I think I was able to open some doors. I was able to get a hold of Dr. Lanza. Call, I cold called him one day uh, and I, uh, he didn't answer. I left him this really long message, which basically I told him, I just dumped the story on him. And I thought, you know, I got to be honest. I can't bullshit. I can't, I can't. I can't code it, not code it, but I can't couch it in any kind of, I got to just tell him. So I laid it on him and the dude called me back and I was shocked. And uh, he called me back and he said, look, Christopher, I'm a scientist, uh, but I can tell you that uh, all of this sprang from, let's just say, uh, similar types of experiences. I'm not going to go into detail, but he, what he said at the end of the day was, you have my full support to do and whatever you need, I will do it. We can do this documentary totally for free. He, he's doing it. And, and he put his assistant on it uh, to do this incredible outline about how to uh, roll out biocentricism throughout the doc. I mean, beyond the pale of what he should have done when somebody's coming to him to do a documentary about him normally how these things work is you have to pay money for rights you have to do this you have to do that none of that it was like yes 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 and i'll tell you something else i have a let's just say a significant person in my life who's a little older who's probably i would say one of the most famous people in the world if not maybe the top three yeah. of all, maybe of the last 50, 60 years. Yeah, I know you're talking and about. this person in particular, who I'm very close with, uh, I've approached a few times about doing business things with them and they've always said no. Hey, they always said, hey, I love you. Love you, but I, no. I mentioned to this person, uh, I didn't go into great detail about, because I don't know if this person would be open to what the detail is, but I basically you know, emailed this person one day and I said, hey, look, I'm doing a documentary on consciousness because I think it's really important, you know, and I kind of laid out the facts, the sort of general facts, and I sent an email. Anyways, this is a person that, uh, you know, gets back to me, but it takes a few weeks or it takes a few days. This is a very busy person. Yeah. This person got back to me less than a minute and says, oh my God, Christopher, uh, I'm writing right now uh, my biography about my life. I'm writing about our time together uh, when we were a family. And more importantly, I'm writing how consciousness is the only thing that can save humanity at this current time. Yes, 100%, I will be in your documentary. 100%. And honestly, Grant, I've talked to some, you know, I wanted, I want to do the documentary. I'm doing the documentary about biocentricism, but it's about consciousness in general. And I really feel that, you know, all input is valued input in terms of consciousness, life experiences, synchronicities. So I'm interviewing all types of people. So the focus is biocentric, but I'm interviewing some famous singers, some famous actors, some politicians, some scientists. Uh, oh God, where was I going with this? Uh, oh, right, this is where I'm going. In, in my, in my you know, 30 plus years working in the entertainment world at, you know, at a, at a fairly high end, yeah. uh, I've never had an experience business-wise where anyone has said yes for free, ever, especially these kind of people. Every single person has said yes for free and donated hours and hours of their time and, and said yes right off the bat. So that tells me great forces are at work here. That tells me great forces are behind the scenes willing 
to aid us in our endeavors if we're willing to do the footwork. Greater forces that we can ever imagine, forces of love and compassion, the, the constitution of universal law is love and compassion, in my opinion, and for what they're telling me. And uh, all we need to do is be willing and have even a halfway bit of an inch of door open in our spirit to be willing, even if 97% we think is total horseshit, if if 3% is willing in an authentic way and we're willing to do the footwork, great forces of love and compassion are coming to our aid, period. Wow. And they're already, in, in, they're already in motion in a groovy sort of way. So, right, look, Grant, this is what, they're, what you're saying. This is what I'm getting from them, which is this. Everything you just said is 100% bullseye. Both you and Desta are doing amazing work groundbreaking work, period, love it. What, what, what they're telling me is this, is that biocentricism is the basis al alphabet in terms of understanding, knowing, communication, ways of thinking, ways of being, how things are in the, all the universes. From there, it goes beyond. But it's not about UFOs. It's not about any of these things i mean it is about these things because people are having these experiences and they're very real and i i i am not saying that that's not real and it's not valuable but what they're saying to me is is that everything is this space of consciousness in terms of communication in terms of physical being that you know that that we this this world that we live in is this sort of manufactured narrative uh but that everything is really energy and and, and thought and consciousness and you know oh boy i'm rambling because i'm not an expert but i'm learning that but it's like the more focus we put on hey wait a minute let's stop trying chasing ufos let's sit down close our eyes meditate and come go deep, as deep as we can into that space because in that space it's it's the whole ball of wax yeah. and uh you know again i'm not an expert I, i'm just learning this stuff but that's where where it all is yeah you know i'll tell you honestly how it happened uh you know i like i said i had watched the stephen greer movies and that kind of lit some sort of subconscious fire in me uh, and then that I think was a synchronicity to open me up that got my consciousness focused a little bit, even on maybe a subconscious level to this topic. And then I had my contact, uh, after having contact when that first daytime thing and it started, you know, I started watching, uh, different YouTube videos. I would see like the secure team stuff and, and, and the full, full phase of moon and, and Steven Greer and your stuff. I saw one or two of your videos and mostly was watching all these other kind of different, uh, just craft videos. But what happened for me is, you know, I've always been a person, even before all of this, that I, I felt kind of like I could feel energy of people. I don't want to say like, like super psychic because I wasn't that at all. I wasn't psychic, I was, but I could feel like if somebody walked into the room and they were an angry person, I could kind of feel that or if they were really loving, I could feel that. When I saw there was something about your face and the way you talked, when I saw your face and when I saw you speak, it wasn't the words you spoke, it wasn't the way your face looked, there was something about you that I felt like I had known my whole life. I felt like I had, it was like a long lost best friend or a brother or somebody that I had a dear love for. And, and I don't expect that to be reciprocal. It, it, I'm not saying it for any of those reasons. That was just a point in fact. And I was kind of like struck by, I don't know this person. Uh, you have to understand, I've been a, I'm been a super reclusive person my whole yeah. life. Uh, I, I don't think I'm better or worse than anybody. I love people, you know, but I work and I go home. And that's it. Uh, I don't make new friends. I, I wanted to, but, but I, I haven't in most of my, I've had a couple of friends that I've been friends with for 50, 40 years, whatever. Yeah. But when I saw your face and I heard your voice, there, there was something about you. 
and so I knew I had to contact you. I swear to God, that's how it happened. And when I, when I, when we talked, when you called me, I was so excited and shy. And I said to my wife, why am I so fucking excited to talk to Grant Cameron? I don't know this guy. I mean, I mean, not that you're not an amazing dude, you are. But I just was like really excited. And after I talked to you on the phone that night, I said to my wife again, I said, I feel like I just, you know, talked to an old friend that I haven't seen for many years. So Grant, that's how it started. And then after is when I kind of discovered, you know, after we started to have that conversation about what you were saying. And it was very much in line with everything that, you know, I was learning. You know, let me, I want to just want to say another thing about, um, about consciousness or any of this stuff. You know, I doubt myself all the time about all of this stuff because you can't help it because something weird that happens is like, you know, if you don't see them, like if, you know, if they come all the time and then they stop coming for a day or a week and I noticed that they would start, they started to stop coming in a certain way. They would show up around a full moon, usually a couple days before a full moon, stay for two days after a full moon and then leave. But that entire time, um, that this was happening for the first, let's say it's happened for eight months, for six months of it, you know, I was seeing them, everything I just told you, I was seeing with my eyes, but, uh, you know, I couldn't see anything else, you know, ghost spirits or any of these things. Two months ago, I started seeing these things inside the house. And I told you that, you know, I, I started seeing these things outside in our garden, these flashes of darkness that would fly through the window and literally into the house. And then after like a week of seeing that, it kind of turned into orbs. And I was seeing hundreds of orbs fly through the garden in the house or just in the house. Then I was seeing these smoky, wispy sort of things in our house that would just, and then I would see these dots of golden light in the house that would appear with little sparkles all around him. Now, I wasn't seeing that for almost 50 years of my life up until two months ago. So this has been a progression, but what, it's, what they're telling me is, look, Christopher, it's not, we're teach, we, we, we showed up as UFOs to catch your attention, yeah. but that's not what it's about, man. It's about energy. I'm, we're teaching you because you're a visual person, we're letting you see these things. And now I see these things every single day, night. If there's a little shadow in room or if it's nighttime, it's 24 seven in the house. I literally can be sitting with my wife watching TV, not seeing anything, and then get a little feeling inside myself to say hello. And I literally adjust my consciousness. I do soft eyes. I kind of watch without watching and the smoke starts starts doing this like this little wispy smoke thing and then the little sparkles and the orbs everywhere and so it's it's a totally about that they did something to me and they shifted my consciousness in a way where i'm not seeing these things and it's now becoming way more about that and about then about st craft and stars in the sky so anyways i'm rambling i apologize Yep, I do have a name for him. I, I, I'd prefer not to say his yep, name okay. right now, but if, yeah. yeah. No, no, okay. you don't have so, to just, but I'd, re I'd like to hear this, this message about the, the fear thing, which you told me about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so, so what he told me, I'm assuming it's, he, it's a he, and what I, I call him by a certain name, and I also say to the others being, being family. I call them family because, and it was crazy, because of the, these other vi random videos I've seen for people, they call them family too. These are absolutely our family 100 percent. so what they said to me was when they make contact with a person they scan the person's consciousness uh as a way to create a, a, a communal alphabet so that they can talk with the person they always talk to the person in the person's voice in my in what they're telling me yeah. they scan the consciousness so it's a, so whatever that person's collection of memories are feelings thoughts and emotions about life themselves people uh movies they've seen just everything they scan that entire all that information and then they use that as a common language alphabet to communicate with that person so that that person can understand and there's a mute there's mutual ground to connect with and have a, an ongoing relationship with so that it's not totally this foreign 
thing starting up. So it's a starting place for the human being because it's their own experiences. And they use that as a way to uh, create conversation and talk and interact. And so what he, he was saying was, you know, if the person is a super loving person, then that's the experience and the dialogue and the conversation that you can, that, there, that is going to happen with you. Uh, and that relationship is going to be that type of relationship. If the person is a super fearful person, then they're going to use that information as a way to communicate and also teach you lessons. And so, by the way, you know, you can request uh, what you want and what you don't want. Now, I don't know if that works with all different beings, but with these beings, it has. When this first started, I was terrified. And I, and I, was, I said to them before I knew his name or being family, I, you know, I would always go to this place of love you, love you, being family, love you, being, because I was so scared. I was so terrified, but I felt in my gut, if I say love you, it felt like a common language. It must be somehow. And so I would just go to this place of like, just saying nothing, but love you being family, love you, being family, you know, cause I was so terrified. I didn't know what was going to happen. And then at one point I said, please be gentle with me. I, I, I don't want to be terrified. I don't want my family to be hurt. Can you just be gentle with me and take me through these experiences in a gentle way, please? And they did. <laughs> and that was in the very beginning before they sort of taught me this other thing. But then, you know, this other lesson was basically, I, I, you know, I was asking, you know, like, how do you, how do, so basically it's all about a person, who they are as a human being, what occupies their consciousness. That's going to dictate the type of relationship that you have and the experiences that you go through and how you are taught. But from what they're telling me, it's never meant with hurt. It's never meant to, to terrorize somebody. It's just meant as a tool of teaching. And they don't know any better. All they know is what they're scanning from the person. So if they scan your consciousness and they see a terrorized, fearful, bigoted, per whatever it is, that's all they know about the person. So that's what they're going to use at their disposal to talk to you and communicate and teach you. They don't know that, you know, so I'm sure they know, but in terms of dialogue, that's what they, they I, I'm assuming for what they're telling me, that's what they assume works best for that person. So that's how they teach. Yeah. So I, you know, I think I'm a pretty loving person. I mean, I'm not, I'm certainly a flawed human being, but that's where I was coming from. And that's kind of how it's gone for me. And I also requested if they could be gentle and I still do every day and night and thank them. And, you know, you, there was a dialogue that happened. So basically where we are today is I talk to them every day and every night. It's not a big deal. It's not like this long conversation that happens every time, but literally I can get one word answers or a couple sentence answers, but it's always on, it's pretty on tap. It's like whenever I ask or want to ask a question, and I'll tell you something else really crazy. Uh, you know, they, they're still around, but they're, they show up in different ways rather than big blazing orbs and, you know, craft flashing. They, they show up in a more stealthy way now. But there was a period of time where they weren't showing up at all in a certain type of way. I was still talking to them every day. I was still seeing all the stuff at night in, in the house. That's never going away. That's, I'm changed forever in that way. Yeah. Uh, and all this, and we were still communicating. But there was some time that went where I didn't see them. And I started to feel very homesick for them, very sad. And one night I was just basically kind of crying and I had a hard day at work and I was just like, I really, really, really need to see you. And I've had a couple moments like that where they'll flash a light in the sky a couple times to let me know that they're there at those moments or slow, you know, it's crazy. They're a very compassionate, thoughtful, gentle, wise um, I can't, you know, I can't say enough about them. I mean, I know there's a lot of different types of beings, but these in particular are all those things and more. Uh, and they're our family, 100%. That's exactly correct, correct. And that's exactly correct to a be even bigger picture. You have to take ownership of your consciousness. And you have to understand that 
your consciousness is physical material that whenever whatever you're thinking you're creating actual physical material that's going out into the world and creating whatever it is that so you have to take ownership of your mind your thoughts and you have to make a conscious choice to pick a direction in terms of how you feel and your intention intention is everything is what they're telling me and i and 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 that goes across the board and all so my choice is loving and compassion yeah, but, but do just exactly what you said in every area. I want to say Desta is amazing and Grant is amazing. And you guys are doing really great work, really kick-ass work. I mean, you guys are so on target. You know, and I can't go down the rabbit hole on secret bases and reptilian and all these other things. That might be true because you know what, guys? I wasn't seeing orbs and and smoke beams and golden lights while I'm watching uh, uh, South Park with my wife up until two months ago. And I was seeing UFOs, but uh, all I'm saying is all that stuff, uh, all that stuff could be real, reptilian and all these different things. Who knows? But what? But I'm just what I know is that I really appreciate the very focused, clear, amazing work that both of you are doing, and I just I really want to thank both of you again. It's funny. Okay, I'll just tell you the bottom line of what's going on. First of all, there, there are craft here every night. Uh, the origin of those craft, uh, I have some theories, but let me just say there are, there are hundreds of orbs here every night outside in the house, but outside for sure. Uh, hundreds of craft, I wouldn't say hundreds, but a lot of craft here every night. So, yeah, I, you know, when you're in Hollywood, uh, there are many different facets of Hollywood. My facet of Hollywood does nothing to do with cameras. So I am not a guy who was on Facebook. I am not a guy who was on Twitter. I am not a guy who owns an iPhone. I own an old beater phone. I was really, my wife is all into that. I was anti all that. So when this started happening, it wasn't like I had some iPhone that I could rip out. I, I have this camera that's got a phone, but I don't even know how to use it. So... So, so, so when this started happening, what I did was, is I bought this Bushnell night vision camera, e Bushnell Equinox night vision camera. And I spent 500 bucks on it, you know, cause I don't know from cameras. I thought it was a good camera. It looked like a good camera. So I bought the camera and it doesn't have, it has a manual focus. It has like a, a, a clicker that you can kind of click to zoom in and out, like with your finger. Uh, it goes different phases of night vision, day night vision, that, but that's it. Um, so here's the problem is like, you know, I, I film these things. I put in fresh batteries. I film these things within one minute. It drains all the batteries dead in the camera. So I literally, to get three minutes of footage, I have to put four packs of new batteries in for three minutes. Wow. So that's problem number one. Well, I can get around that problem because I can buy batteries. Problem number two is, okay, I'm seeing these things clear as day with my eye, clear as day. I'm look, taking my camera. I'm, uh, I'm manually adjusting the focus. I'm seeing them clear as in day. I'm like, all right, everybody's going to love this shit. This is kick ass. I got, I got them. I film it. I'm like, yay. I go into the house. I, I said to my wife, I just got the most killer footage ever. I'm, you know, da, da, da. so I import the footage from the camera into our Mac. Uh, I, and I watch it on uh, photos. And three seconds of the footage is perfect. And then Grant, these, these craft are doing some kind of strobe effect that you cannot see with your eyes. You can't see them when you're filming it. But when you watch the footage, literally what happens is you watch three seconds of the footage and then all of a sudden you see the footage starts to strobe. And then what happens is that frame, that last third second of that frame, starts to stick onto the next image and then the next image starts to stick onto and then it starts to kind of double and triple and quadruple and then you all you have is this bouncing static like insanity can't watch anything and that went on for weeks and i'm like shit i i i have this camera i'm filming this stuff and this is happening so i thought oh, God damn it so i sent the camera back to bushnell and i said i bought this camera a month ago it's not working 
Bushnell checked it over, did all their tests, sent it back in a month, said, hey, the camera's perfect. Through all our tests, nothing's wrong with it. So I thought, okay, great. So I got the camera back. I started filming again, exact same thing. So I literally sat on hours and hours and hours of this footage for months because I'm like, I, I don't know how to, I don't know what to do because I'm not like this camera guy and I have to work. And I, it wasn't like I could go investigate all this stuff. So, so um, one day I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to take this footage and I'm going to put it into this iPod I'm going to see what happens. So I did. And, oh my God, the footage is watchable. You have some slight strobe effect, but, but it's watchable. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm going to finally do this YouTube channel. People are going to see real proof of these craft close up, these orbs close up, these fake stars close up, these, all this great shit that's happening, these military planes flying in with these fake stars. I'm, this, we're going to get these finally. So, uh, okay, so I have it in an iMovie. I'm watching it. I'm watching the whole video. I see a little bit of a strobe here and there, but no big deal. I can still watch the video. I go to export the raw footage, and I get an error message from iMovie, t error t uh, 1008, can't, the footage is corrupt, can't, can't export it. And I'm thinking, what is going on with this? So I spent literally probably a week or two trying to figure it out, finally Googled the right thing, where basically the guy said in Google, uh, the footage, there's some part of your footage that's corrupt. What you have to do is you have to go edit out the strobe and then try again to export. It probably should export. So I literally had to, with each thing I film, I have to literally, I can't give you the raw footage so that you get perspective, so that you see, you know, because I film these things like, okay, I'm sitting in front of my driveway. There's the hedge. There's the orb. It's slowly manifesting. Watch the orb fly up my ass. It's right there. It's there. So you get the whole picture. But, when, but, but now I, ha I have to edit these in strobes out, otherwise it won't let me export. So, so literally I have to watch each video clip that I put to YouTube. I have to watch each strobe effect and then I have to edit it out and then watch it again. And, and literally it's all the way through the clip, each thing I film. So that's why when people watch this thing, they're like, what's the perspective? I don't get it. Why is it just going here? And then you just seen the orb and then you go away. It's because I have to edit around these goddamn strobes. So, so, so finally I figured it out. I was able to salvage enough of these, I thought, amazing uh, orbs and some of this amazing craft. You know, it's, it, it's not super clear because the camera's not great. Uh, I am focusing. I am seeing. One thing in particular is what I'm seeing with my eyes when I, so when I'm looking at this with my eyes and then I put the camera up to my head and I look through the camera, I'm seeing every detail of these craft. And also for some reason, that's not showing up on film. So the videos on YouTube for some reason, and believe me, it pisses me off. I'm super frustrated about it. Yeah. It's not showing every detail and I'm having to cut around the strobes, but that's what you have. So I am looking into getting a way, 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 way better camera. I'm going to pull out the big bucks, and I'm hoping that this camera is going to pull back the curtains once and for all. We're going to be able to look up the, uh, the tushy of some of these craft and see every little detail. That's the only thing. Yeah. Grant, that, that's the only thing, man. That, 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 that's the only, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I just, yeah, but that, that, that's the really, because you know, at the end of the day, Grant, the message is, this is what the message is, is that we have to, this is mine, what they're telling me. So you, biocentricism, but beyond that, what filming videos is fine is what they're telling me. Hey, filming videos is good. It gets people thinking, whether people agree or don't agree that's okay too. Uh, some people love you. Some people love to hate you. But the bottom line is they love you. So what they're telling me is it's, it's not about whether people believe it or not. It's just about getting them to think about it and talk about it. That plants the seed of consciousness change. Yeah. And, and, and what are they telling me? I was just going to tell you something. Oh, shit, I forgot. Um, yeah, I remember what I was going to say. Let me say it really quickly and then I'll stop. You're right. Well, that's a great idea. But this is what they wanted me to say. And this is what they want me to do. Even if nobody believes me, even if they all think the footage is dog shit, yeah. it doesn't matter because the point is, is to get people talking about biocentricism, about consciousness, about all these amazing insights that all these different people are sharing on the subject. 
that that create that plants the seed of 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 it being potentially possible for everybody that's helpful in getting us to that point where we're sort of our consciousness raised what they want what they want me to do and what they want the people who are interested in this story to do is to not just put up videos not just to talk about it on youtube but to physically put a collective together where we start to implement some kind of physical representation of the changes we want to make uh either by marching or by like things what gandhi did martin luther king not just to talk and share that's good but to physically put together because they're saying to me hey christopher the power is at everybody's feet in their hands are you going to sit by and let them rob you of your freedom and of everything kill the planet are you going to just watch this like it's a video game that has no consequences because it's not you got to do more than just talk about it you got to do more than just post videos you got to do more than just write books we they want us in the streets they want not in a violent way but in a collective way in a cohesive way where we figure out how to move the agenda of unity peace healing of the planet oneness in a way where it has real physical political muscle in a way that it has real change affected to it um that's that's an important aspect of it so everything's important but they also want to see more people do these kinds of things as well I'm in uh, State Park and I'm filming orbs everywhere. Wow. Look at all these things in the, cr in the sky. It's just like everywhere. Wow. Whoa. I'm just gonna like hold the camera down like just right above the trees. Look at that.
at that. They're just like flying everywhere. Everywhere. This is nuts. What are those things in the sky? Look at that. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. I'm just right over the parking lot. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. If you can't tell me that this is not normal, please, what is all this stuff in the air flying all around? You see that? Holy shit. just everywhere man look at that just passing by something's going on major guys what was the fuck what is that what was that flip flop thing Hi, this is Grant Cameron from the KGARA podcast, The Cameron Files. What follows today is a follow-up interview I did with my friend Chris. Chris, for those who haven't followed my previous interviews, is a Hollywood A-lister. He has two family members who have stars on the Hollywood Rock of Fame. He himself has been on the red carpet a few times. He also has been in a couple of movies and has had a band. And some of his music has appeared in, movie, in movies. Today I talked with Chris as an extension to other interviews I've done, which goes more into his experience, which started nine months ago. Today I will talk with him about, number one, the birds that have been a part of his experience. He's had experience with hawks, owls, and hummingbirds. Then I will talk to him about his attempts to film the phenomena that has surrounded him for the last nine months. His effort to buy cameras, to film the problems he's had with film, and finally, we talk a lot about the environment. And this seems to be a big part of Chris's story. As you listen, you'll see he gets a little emotional when he talks about this. It's an important part that many experiencers have mentioned, the environment of the earth. So sit back and enjoy. Good evening, Thanks I'm uh, joined by my friend Chris. And I want to go through a little bit of an update as to what's been going on. One of the parts of the story that we had sort of missed talking to you about before was what you mentioned in your first video is, is your, the association to animals, to this phenomena that you're experiencing. Can you go through, starting with the hawks and then to the other animals that you had um, that seem to be tied into this? Yeah, absolutely. Again, amazing to be with you guys. Thank you again for everything, Grant. I love 
both of you and everything that you're doing. So I appreciate being here with you. And so hi to everybody else. Um, yeah. So basically how I kind of got an, uh, any kind of idea about the bird, a bird connection is one night, it was about 1130 at night and I'm in my bedroom with my kitty, Ween. My kitty's name is Ween, by the way, everyone. And so Ween and I are sitting uh, in the bedroom with the lights off. We have a big window that looks at, uh, at our garden. And uh, above our garden, we have, uh, in our garden, we have these fruit trees. And then we have these telephone pole uh, lines that run about 20 feet off the ground. And so I'm, uh, I'm looking out the window with Ween, and Ween starts to kind of like zip her head from left to right, kind of looking at something, and I'm staring kind of at the ground. I look up, and I see uh, maybe 10 feet above the power lines, uh, a, a big shadow, uh, an outline of this, and, I've se and I'd seen it once before. And so basically it looked like a giant hawk, like the, the silhouette of a giant hawk, maybe 50 feet long. And it was one of the craft. And I had seen it once before when this first began. I was in my driveway and I was looking above our roof, maybe 10 feet above our roof. And this fireball came out of the nothingness. This golden fireball basically shot across our roof and uh and that was the first time i had seen it and i was totally blown away and it you know it shot across our roof and then like 15 20 feet then disappeared and i was in sort of like awe and as i was sort of looking up to see what where that came from i had seen this big silhouette of a hawk and i was like what the f what is that was it a pterodactyl and i see this silhouette that is like almost like a craft, but almost like an outline of a giant hawk. And so that was the first experience. So that night, uh, Ween and I are sitting there and she's looking around and I look up above the power lines, if, you know, maybe 10 or 15 feet, whatever it was, and, and I see this silhouette. And, uh, and it was only for, you know, maybe five, six seconds, but I see it kind of like go off uh, into the base southwest direction. And by the way, that's, they, when they come, they always come from the southwest um, in the sky. Um, so a bit, maybe a couple weeks after that, uh, you know, that night, you know, we were, I was having all the contact. And um, so I started noticing during the daytime as I was like walking outside, I would see these hawks flying in the sky. Oh, by the way, sorry, I forgot. When, this, when, con when the contact first started, before I saw anything, before the very first thing, not the daytime sighting, that was just kind of an anomaly. But after that, every time that I would have contact, before I would have contact, I would always hear a screeching of a loud bird. And it sounded like a hawk screeching. Could have been an owl, but it sounded like a hawk. I'd hear the screeching. And then a 10 or 15 minutes later, I'd have the sighting. So that, so after that experience, I, I, I started seeing hawks flying in the sky all the time, um, always kind of flying over our house in pairs. And, and then, and that went on for like a couple of weeks. And then one day I was in our, our uh, kitchen and I, it was during the daytime and I, and I'm getting ready to go to work and I walk out of the house off the side of the kitchen and I walk out to the driveway and literally as I open our fence to like walk through the fence, something whooshes by my head. I feel something touch the top of my head. I'm like startled. I'm like, what? And I look up and literally this hawk had just flown across my head, uh, feet, I think, touched my head and it lands 10 feet in front of me in our driveway and stares at me. And this is during the daytime, like, you know, almost middle of the day. Uh, and I sat there and I was like, whoa, and I just was totally blown away. And, um, and then it took off. And then so basically I started having these experiences where these hawks would, would fly super close to me or land on my car or, you know, I was sitting out in our backyard having lunch one day and two hawks landed and flew and landed on the table where I was sitting and just stood there, these big hawks. I mean, it, so what happened is, is I was obviously, it was like, they were saying, okay, wake up, idiot. You know, we're trying to make contact with you. Okay. Um, you know, so I started to incorporate, I have this prayer that I do every day 
uh, that I thank them and I thank other sort of beings that I connect with and I incorporated them into a prayer, you know? And so basically that was the beginning of this, this, this connection. Um, and I just started to really realize that there was some kind of very real connection between hawks, but I think maybe all birds and this, these beings, whoever they are. Um, and that was how the hawk story started. Um, so that's how that started. Uh, have, have you asked about them? You know, to the, the sort of the source that you're talking to? Have you asked them about what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I have, I, I have, you know, asked about that, you know, and and basically, hawks and other kinds of birds, hummingbirds as well, uh, and 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 owls um, have a specific connection to them. I don't really know exactly, you know, what they said is that they're somehow related somehow. They're somehow connected somehow. They're a representation of them somehow here. But they're very, these beings, whoever they are, they're very deeply connected with nature. Nature is a major thing, a connection with them. And they, they, they use them, they use, they use real hawks and birds to send messages in terms of to, if they want to connect with somebody, if they can't be there. And they also can manifest uh, an image of a hawk or some other kind of bird uh, to send messages. Uh, it hasn't been grant. It hasn't been like a really in depth, like description and like origin story. But it was just, you know, when I talk to uh, this one being, it's very clear and direct. But it's like one or two line answers. Sometimes it gets a little bit longer, but it's not yeah. unless it's like a b informational download thing. But that's basically yeah. it. Yeah. But nature, nature is a huge part of the, this connection for them. What about the hummingbirds? You had hummingbirds as yeah. well? Yeah, this was in it more, a, a little bit more of a dramatic, interesting story. So, so after this whole thing started, I was started doing this prayer every day where I just thank them. I tell them how much I love them. I, 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 I you know, acknowledge them. I want to send love to their families and their worlds and that we're all one family and that we're connected. And I, and I asked for the mind, body, spirit, and strength to really make real changes and be a part of that rather than just do videos and talk, but real changes, you know, and just this kind of elaborate prayer that probably is partly, partially out of anxiety to try to make myself feel safe in my own space, but it's also a real earnest, heartfelt connection to connect with them. So this was this prayer that I do, and it's a little OCD, I admit it, that's fine, you know, whatever it is, I'm doing my best. Um, so this, so, so, you know, we've been into this thing now for nine months. So two, so maybe, let's say maybe a month and a half ago, um, I work outside at our house, you know, a lot. I started to notice this hummingbird when I was out in our yard and, you know, hummingbirds are normally very skittish, you know, they zip in, they, they do the flower and then they're gone. They don't usually hang out with people. When they see a person, they run away. So I'm out in my yard and I look above my roof and I see this little hummingbird that's hovering maybe four, a couple of feet above the roof and he's looking directly at me one day and he's like just staring at me. And I thought, oh, that's a little weird, you know, and, and then he zipped away. And this happened then and then and then, you know, a couple days later, same kind of thing. And then it started happening pretty much every day. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting. This some this I think maybe that's, you know, maybe them connecting with me somehow. So I started to incorporate the a hummingbird teacher. I call them teachers. You know, I say, thank you, Hawk teacher. Thank you, being family, blah, 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 that kind of thing. So I started incorporating hummingbird as my teacher at, with Hawk. So I've, I started doing this for a couple of weeks after this was going on. And, uh, and so like a couple days ago, I go out to our garden and I'm walking over. And every morning when I get up and I go outside before I work, I connect with the tree. I put my hand, I know this sounds really goofy, but I put my hand on a tree and I say, I love you tree. I, and try to listen, you know, just for any kind of connection and send them love, flowers, all of it, mother earth. I put my hands on mother earth and I imagine that I can send her healing energy and all the beings in the world are healing her at one time. And we're all healing us together. All, you know, just real crazy shit. <laughs> so, but I believe it. I believe that there's something to it. Um, 
So I, I, I'm doing all of this and I'm in the sort of in the bushes with a tree and I'm standing there kind of hidden and all of a sudden this hummingbird flies in to where I'm at and lands on a branch uh, five inches from my face and sits there with me and doesn't move, staring right at me. And I'm like, all right, this is the hum my hummingbird teacher. And I start saying, thank you, love you. And this hummingbird sits there, Grant, with me for 15 minutes. Wow. And I'm, I'm moving around, I'm touching my face, I'm itching my beard, and it's not moving, and it's staring right at me. And it's literally five inches from my face. And I found that to be an amazing moment. And so then it eventually split after 15 minutes. I go to work, I go back. Maybe half an hour later, I go back to the same spot and the hummingbird flies back in, sits there again with me for another 10 minutes, two inches from my face. And now this hummingbird every day comes, I'll be working at the computer outside, it'll land on the desk and it'll just sit there, look at me and I'll just basically say, thank you teacher, love you. I don't know what the teachings are yet. I think it's about realizing that, uh, love and connection there's a lot more to that and, and the willingness to believe in this in the most outlandish stuff if it's centered and the intention is about connection and love and compassion and oneness and healing coming from that place there's something about that vibration when you kind of just say okay i'm going to go with this there's something about nature all these things start to hear you and respond and i think they start to see they read something on you they smell something and there starts to be a real exchange that is like disney stuff you know what you would see in a disney movie like you know the dancing and singing nature you know like the disney movie was just try going down the little trail and all the birds and everybody that kind of shit is is happening now wow. i mean no, nobody's broken out of like a little you know like a still pop pipe and did like a little jig dance in the golden <laughs> highway but you know short of that i mean this stuff is I, I, you know I, I i wish to god i could take a photo with my brain and film all this stuff and 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 and, and give it to each one of the people that are watching these videos and have them experience this because it's really happening i'm not making this up people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so anyways, yeah. You talk about a lot about love connection to the uh, yeah. nature. Have you had? Did you have this kind of um, no. attitude before Never. this experience started? No, man. No, I, 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 no, no. I mean, I was. Uh, I grew up with a father that was super violent. Uh, I was. He threw me into boxing and martial arts and fighting and. And, you know, I had a very sensitive, beautiful mother, uh, you know, and I was a, a compassionate person, you know, but I, no, not at all. No, I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, I, the closest I got to nature was jumping in an ocean, you know, but that's about it. I wasn't at all this person. So, so, this, so this has well, changed your life then completely. It shattered my life, Grant. Grant. It's, it's it, not in a bad way. Yeah. But it's, 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 I am in a perpetual state of almost, not from a depression or sad place, but from tears. You know, I am so moved and so viscerally on the edge of my heart with this entire experience. And I so desperately want to convey and share that with every single person that's watching or listening to you. I just want to, I, and I don't have the words and I don't have the, the, the capability with the cameras and to capture everything the way it's happening, but I'm chasing it for me and for everybody because there is a real thing happening here. And, and our responsibility to each other and are changing our consciousness to each other and how we take care of this planet and each other and deal with each other, that's the only thing that anybody, all of us should be focusing on. Because in my opinion, 
it's all about consciousness and that consciousness is a physical material world not let's say let's talk about the natural state of all things which we know is a physical world yep. that's in my opinion like the natural state of all things 99 percent of the physical material natural state is this space of consciousness which is an actual physical realm a material realm where all things are possible creation love is at the center the constitution of this universal something that's creating all this but that's everything that's everything the one percent is this physical thing that we're in and uh and i'm lost i don't know what i was saying but but basically what i'm saying is um i'm in this place that i don't i'm 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 grasping for straws in this emotional space of love and compassion and totally consumed by by the possible we have so much control and power in our own hands as human beings and 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 all of that is consciousness and choice and uh and so anyway, so yeah, nature is everything. Consciousness is everything. And our responsibility to each other is everything. And I think we're chasing too many straws that ha lead, you know, everybody talks about, uh, you know, let's find zero point energy and science, but, but all of that wouldn't do us any good if we don't change who we are inside and how we see everything, our consciousness. And that's everything. You know, what they said to me last night as I was talking about this, you know, because I don't think there's anything wrong with chasing zero point energy and craft and all these different things. Of course, those are brilliant things that'll change the planet. But if we don't change, if we don't understand that consciousness, love and compassion somehow is the DNA of this consciousness. It's, and, and this consciousness is not just a place we close our eyes and think of. It's all around us. We are, there are many beings all around us, just out of eyesight, that are physically swimming all around us. And we are the same of, as them, except we are in this physical form at this time. Um, and so if we realize that love and compassion and say, okay, now, not just love and compassion not just the word consciousness but how are we physically going to put our differences aside how are we physically going to take physical action to heal the planet not just say the words heal the planet but like how, how can we all come together and then have this space of like okay let's let's try to be friends with all our differences and and physically and own that space consciously and then and and then look at all these other things you know but but i'm just rambling but the point is is that uh you know all these things that people are talking about going after if you're not responsible as a human being and not not willing to embrace each other it's just going to lead to more destruction and pain and suffering even with zero point energy or a craft that could go to here to you know i don't know i just can't keep coming back to this consciousness thing you know because there's more to it than just these lofty notions it's this physical and why i say it's a physical material world is because they changed my eyesight two months ago where i'm seeing every night in my house these literally probably spirit orbs this mist that's alive and conscious this electrical dot energy that when i sit on my couch in the darkness and i hold out my hand and i say in my head love you energy being family it starts to gather around my hand and i can't see my fingers grant and i i know my hands attached to it and i literally have told us to this i've had to check my hand multiple times because portions of my fingers disappear and i'm thinking okay am i not seeing my fingers or is something obstructing and it gathers more and more it, it, like there's there's more of it when i talk to this thing so i know it's conscious and it's interacting with me and it's swimming all around us at all times that's really what's going on so that's what i'm talking about that space is, is consciousness that's the physical world that we live in but and that's the nine and that's the 99 percent of everything that is 
rather than this 1% of material world. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to describe to you what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling. It's wonderfully said. It's, it's a very deep message that you're, you're putting out. And uh, so congratulations. Um, Thanks. Did that, any of that make sense? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, that, and, and that I think you're going to try to put across in the documentary. Are you going to try to deal with that aspect of, of the real meaning yeah. to what's going on here? Yeah, I mean, I, I, the, the do, the, yeah, absolutely. The conscious, the biocentric consciousness documentary, for sure. I'm going to focus on Robert Lanz's theory of biocentricism, and I'm tr going to try to unfold that for the audience in layman's terms, because I'm certainly not an expert on it, and it's pretty technical stuff. But I'm going to focus on that, but I'm also going to try to, you know, elaborate on what I'm talking about, and I'm also going to do that in other videos. Um, as I learn what it is, I mean, because honestly, what I'm trying to do in this interview and all, all anything else I put out is I'm literally describing to you what I'm seeing and feeling. Uh, I'm not an expert to say, oh, they come from Venus and the origin is uh, half monkey and half flying weenie. You know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but I'm telling you, like, I'm sitting in my house every night and I'm seeing on command hundreds of orbs and energy lights flying all around and not only flying around but when i speak to them in my head they multiply and gather around a sp if i hold my hand out and i say touch my hand they multiply around my hand and i start to feel a cool breeze on my hand i start to see all of this so i'm just trying to describe to the audience what i'm seeing but beyond that you know it's just snippets of information or things you know so yeah i'm going to always try to go deeper with the stuff Beautiful. Uh, let's go back to the birds. You had owls yeah. as well, or and yeah. so let's go through that. What what happened there? Um, okay, so with owls, uh, for sure the the owls are part of this thing as well. Um, uh, you know, when this first started, I would have owls that would land literally on branches sort of like right above our house and then hop over to our roof and stare at me. And then five or 10 minutes later, I'd have this experience with a craft, that kind of thing. But one night in particular, this was a really weird thing. So we have a house that has, you know, a couple windows, you know, a, a bathroom window that's sort of small, like maybe a half a foot maybe a half a foot wide, maybe two or three feet long. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of uh, anal about closing all the windows at night, making sure the doors are locked. Uh, not so much because I'm scared of them or whatever. It's more has to do with uh, growing up with a violent father, and it's just kind of a post-traumatic stress thing from that, those years. Uh, but I got through that. So one night, uh, it's about maybe 1.30 in the morning. I'm sleeping. My wife and I, everybody's there. Um, I get up to go to the bathroom that's right off of our bedroom. I use the bathroom, go back to bed. I wake my wife up by accident. She gets up maybe 30 minutes later, goes to the bathroom and screams, Christopher, get up! What, get in here. What are you? I'm like, what, 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 what? I run into the bathroom. I slit, switch on the light. There's this five foot owl sitting on the sink, uh, in our bathroom. <laughs> and I and I'm like, what the, f you know? And I look at the window. The window's shut. Uh, there's no there's no doors open. There's no there's no anything open in the house. My wife is seeing this and freaking out. And I, out of terror, I don't know what to do. I close the bathroom door. I get her out of the bathroom. I close the bathroom door. She runs to the front of the house. And I'm like, you know, I'm a huge animal lover. I'm like, okay, what, how do I get an owl out of the house? And I go back to the bedroom, uh, to the bathroom and open the door and it's gone. Wow. And, and the window's not open. She didn't go back to the bathroom and open the door. I kept the door shut. I put like a, something in front of the door, you know. So, yeah, I think owls are a part of this. <laughs> so you're saying it like it was five, like the size of a human being, like five feet tall? No, it was. It, I wouldn't say a full grown person. It was probably bigger than a normal hour. I'd say maybe four and a half, five feet tall. Maybe about half, maybe half, two feet wide. Yeah. 
Wow. And, and, and brown with a very, uh, very uh, white face, not super big eyes, like little, you know, kind of little eyes. Um, but yeah, big, big kind of beaky thing, you know, like it, it was, it, yeah. So yeah, so that was a really, that was a, you know, that was, I mean, I don't even know how to, that was just a crazy, crazy experience. And how, do you, how do you explain that to your wife? Like, did you have a conversation about this? When this all started, uh, my, my mom, I told you about my, the react, my mom had yeah. kind of a very weird reaction. My wife is English, uh, and very, you know, church of England and very kind, and she's come a long way in her, you know, since she's met me, but basically she was, you know, very kind of straight up and down kind of person didn't believe in this kind of stuff. And so when I first started telling her this, n number one, she saw a hat. She was she was witness to a, a craft flashing one night, uh, which she ran into the house saying, I, "I don't know what that is, but I don't want to see that." Uh, but she was really kind of angry at me for even bringing this stuff up, and every time I would bring it up, you know. Yeah. But over but over the months, basically, she's kind of mellowed a lot, and now she totally believes it. And 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 actually, a lot of these kind of things that we're talking about have started to incorporate in her life. So when that happened, it was kind of early on, um, and I think you know she was. I think she was angry at me. You know, she, I think she felt like somehow I had made that happen and maybe I did, you know, some, you know, I think she was really scared and angry and freaked out. And, um, but I think at the end of the day, she kind of made it feel, she made herself feel like that it was just an owl and somehow got out, got in and got out. And, and I let that go, you know, you know, yeah. because I don't, you know, this is a lot. I mean, I went through so much with this, like questioning my own reality and and just all of it you know for many months you know so it's a lot for somebody to digest and if somebody wants to stay in that space at that time then great i'm gonna let them i don't i don't, I don't need to force anybody to you know, which is in a lot different place now beautiful you told you told desta about the owl or the uh, rabbit can you tell me the rabbit story yeah, the rabbit story is, is, is not, I don't, okay. I mean, maybe it is, I don't know. You know, um, one day when this all, when this all started, a uh, couple months into it, uh, I had wean my little kitty one day was, I always opened the, uh, the window, the door to our, our backyard, not the screen, keep the screen closed, but in the morning. So wean, I'll make breakfast for wean and she'll be eating and sitting in front of the screen. And one day, I, I'm in the kitchen. The kitchen's right off our sort of doorway that looks out to the garden. One day, I'm I, I'm in the kitchen making food, and I hear this like like this like kitty talk, you know, like you know that sort of like chirping thing that they do. I'm like, and then I hear this other like like I'm like, what what is that? You know, it sounds like uh, two little like midgets like talk, you know, like like mini like pygmy midgets. I don't know. No offense to any midgets, uh, little people out there. I was talking more about like pygmy, like, you know, like uh, pigs. That's really what I was talking about. So I hear this like chirping and, and, and I hear chir kitty chirping and I hear some other kind of thing. So I go out the kitchen and I go to the door and I see my little kitty's nose pressed up to the screen and she's talking to this bunny that's like got its bunny nose pressed to the screen and they're like blah, 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 back and forth. Earth. And I'm like, what the fuck? What's going on here? And this wild cottontail bunny uh, somehow got into our yard, and uh, and she was like making friends with Ween. And so every morning, at this certain time, the little bunny would show up, and Ween and the bunny would have their little chirping conversation, <laughs> and and Ween would eat her food and sit at the window, and the bunny would eat the grass in the yard. And so I go out in my yard every day and I work in the yard. I do my little thing and touch the trees. And the bunny just has made our yard the home. And she lives here with us and I don't keep her in any way. And, uh, you know, so one day I was like Googling like how to feed bunnies because I wanted to get her extra food. And so, you know, and I, I read this thing that basically that said like the life and expectancy of wild cottontails is like, you know, I don't even want to say it. It was so short. 
and I just broke down in tears. As you can see now, I just felt so totally like love this animal. And I don't even know. I mean, I love animals. Yeah. But not like this, 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 this feeling in me. I, I, it's ridiculous. It's silly. It's like, it's so good to care and it's good to be compassionate, but not to be so invested. I'm so fucking invested that it's just distracting. So I read this thing and the little bunny was there. And then, you know, a couple of days later she was gone. And I thought, oh my God, oh my God, please let something, let her protect her, please somehow protect her, you know, like I, and let that be an expression and protection for all beings. If I had the power, I would protect us all. And I didn't know what would happen to her. And then a couple of days later, you know, I, 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 and I don't know if this is real or not. Maybe it's all fantasy in terms of, the, of what happened. But I said to them, please, you know, if, if you can just protect her and bring her back, you know. And this one night, um, I went out there and she was gone. And, I, and I, I was crying in the yard. And I was asking that, you know, I said, please just bring her back. And maybe, and so this i saw we ha i had a sighting it was a quick one it was a flash sort of across the sky and whenever i this is so they're so compassionate and so unbelievably thoughtful as beings and i whenever i'm in this place of really whether i'm afraid you know of not having enough money or i'm afraid somebody's going to get hurt or a family thing or i'm having a hard day if i have a super super hard day if i go outside and it doesn't happen all the time now as much as it used to, but they'll come and they'll do like a quick couple flashes and, and to let me know that they hear me and that they're still there. And this was one of those nights. And so the next day I went out and she was there again, the bunny. Now, I don't know if that was like, she was just in another yard. She could have been, probably that's what it was. Um, but she's been here every day since. And, uh, and I don't know how long I have with her. But I'm happy to have her here. And I sound like a fucking douchebag. But it's true, man. I just, I, I don't know what happened to me. Yeah. I just, I feel so responsible for all of us. And, you know, I just, I just want to help all of us. And that's the only reason I'm doing these videos or any of this stuff. Because this is really happening and there's a lot at stake here for all of us. And I don't know how to communicate that any better to any of us by filming what I'm seeing or saying what I'm saying, but we have a responsibility to each other and to this planet. How stupid that fucking sounds and corny and hippie that's real. And through consciousness, we have the power to change the course of everything. And if we direct that consciousness with thoughtful love and compassion and connection to each other and responsibility, and we take ownership of our power of consciousness and of ourselves having that power, great things can happen for all of us. And that is what this is about. And I think that that needs to be focused on first before we look for zero point energy or any of these other things. Because I think if we realize that, that the whole game will change. And then all this other stuff that we talk about and want will happen. And that's how disclosure, I think, will happen. Beautiful message and beautifully said. Thank you. Thank Let's you. go to videos. Yeah. Um, you, yeah. you started the video. Can you update us on yeah. uh, what, what you're doing? And yeah. go ahead. Okay. Well, I just made another video um, two days ago, like a talking one that I'm going to put up describing the stuff that's going on, that, the paranormal stuff that's going on in the house. And by the way, paranormal, UFO, same exact thing, uh, meaning the space that they both occupy, our spirits, is the space that they occupy as well. Whether they come from that space or not, I don't know, guys but that is the same space. So I'm having tremendous amount of that every night on command. So I'm going to, I did a video about that and talked about some other stuff. I'm looking into buying a full spectrum camera to try to capture all this paranormal stuff. Uh, I'm looking into all different kinds of higher tech uh, cameras that track waveform and heat and distance. 
Um, I was contacted by two NASA scientists uh, a couple weeks ago that I didn't mention because I didn't know what I was going to do about it. Um, and basically, they have a think tank with other very um, heavy kind of like smart people uh, who have different fields uh, that they specialize in. And they've expressed an interest from seeing my videos and hearing what I have to say as being similar to what they've gathered in terms of the think tank and want to help me, assist me in tracking and really drilling down on this military back engineered uh, fake star thing that I'm seeing and filming every night and also this other stuff that's legit and you know, beautiful connection, oneness, family, being family stuff. So I'm going to probably reach out to them at, more and say, okay, yeah, come aboard. Let's see if we can, I'm going to have coffee with them first to see where their head's at. What I, what I, I didn't want to, and they're not, as far as I know, they could be, but I don't think that they're associated, uh, employed by NASA currently but they all have had long histories with those at that agency and other places. Okay. So now they have their own think tank uh, out of uh, the South. Um, okay. And anyways, I, I, I was, I, I, I kind of, because of all the scary shit that you see fear mongering shit online with uh, doomsday scenarios and government conspiracies and all that stuff. It, it gave me pause when I was, when I was contacted by them. Uh, and I didn't know because I don't really know that world and I don't know how much of that's real or not real. Um, but I think that they might be good guys and and helpful. So I'm going to kind of pursue that. So that that's and, you know, in terms of helping me track the video and film it and, and identify in a deeper way that I don't know, think I can with the cameras that I have. Beautiful. And you uh, let's go through, um, as I mentioned in the pre um interview we were talking about some people were thinking well you know you're picking up whatever on the camera right and i pointed out to them and i'd like you to sort of go through it that the orb started before the camera you really weren't a camera guy or don't have a cell phone camera mm -hmm. or any of that kind of stuff so can you go through that to say yeah. how this thing developed absolutely yeah i'm not i'm not on facebook nor have i ever been on facebook i'm not on twitter uh, I'm not on any social, social social media platform, nor have I ever been on any social media platform. I don't have an iPhone, nor have I ever had an iPhone. I have literally a beater phone from Costco, a Verizon, little shitty flip phone, believe it or not. I don't know how to use the camera on the phone. Uh, I, I never was on YouTube before we started filming these things um I, I i didn't like any of those things i didn't want to be able to be reached that way um i didn't have any i i didn't own a camera before any of this so basically this all happened and i had real contact and it's you know like everything you know about all the orbs the the military stuff that i'm seeing every night uh that was all with my eyeballs uh and then basically what happened is, uh, you know, I, after a couple, you know, a month or so or whatever it was, I think it was, no, maybe it was a couple of weeks. I don't know of, of, of seeing all this shit, you know, and going, wow, I went, I researched, uh, a good infrared camera. I saw Bushnell was a good one. I went to the photography store near us and I bought this $500 Bushnell camera and I started filming the orbs They're Look guys, they're, they're not. They're not bugs. They're 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 not they're not birds. There there are hundreds of orbs, fly, hundreds of orbs flying everywhere. When you watch my videos and you see those like flashes of white light that are barely discernible across the camera, it's a giant white orb flying in front of the camera. I, I I brought my friend over. I was telling you my friend who doesn't believe in this stuff, who's a teacher from Harvard, very religious guy. Came over and showed him to the camera. I said, "Look up in the sky." He looks up and he sees hundreds of these orbs. Freaked out, dropped the camera. Said, "I never want to come." Basically, bottom line is, there are orbs everywhere. Um, I, what am I trying to say here? Uh, 
I'm gonna, what I'm gonna try to do is get a camera. You know those cheap cameras that can see uh, uh, totally in, uh, everywhere, you know, like in with one lens, basically like a fisheye that sees in all directions at the same time? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the fisheye lens? I don't know what you call it, but it's basically when you film, it sees north, east, west, south. I, I'm gonna try to buy one of those cameras. I'm gonna put it up on my roof and then people will see that there are orbs flying everywhere, hundreds of them from all different directions. Listen, there are literally hundreds of orbs flying everywhere and all, all around. I don't know if they're government things. I don't know if they're ET things. I know that there are different kinds of orbs and I've had real experiences with the real ET people orbs. And I've also seen these military planes and orbs flying all around them. So I don't know. But what I do know is that I, the orbs were discovered before I had any kind of cell phone or camera, any of that stuff. And there are hundreds of orbs on command anywhere you go where I'm at. So it doesn't just have to be at my house. When I filmed that last video, I went into the mountains of Malibu and just sat out there and they were everywhere. And these like flip floppy things that were flying. I don't know what those fucking things were. <laughs> but, yeah. But Grant, not only are there these mini orbs, there are these mini like they look like you know uh you know space invaders this is funny you know the space invaders game you ever seen that game well there's a game space invaders and they have these little like they look like uh bells and they have like basically a bell and then underneath it is like three little squares there are these mini little they look like the size of a baseball that are flying with these orbs that zoom in and out and everywhere one of them was caught on my last video that someone probably thought it was a bug it's not i don't know what those fucking things are the other night i was with my infrared camera sitting outside of our kitchen right on the side of my house and i'm looking around the sky and one of these little things flies over our roof I, I'm sitting right under the eave, so you can't really see me from the sky because I'm kind of hidden by the eave of our roof. It flies out. It looks at me. It sees – whenever I film these things with my camera, they try to get out of the way. They literally zigzag and away, try to away. This thing sees me, goes back over the roof, comes back and looks at me again. I try to go – goes back over the roof. Go, this went on for like 10 or 15 times. These things are intelligently controlled or they're conscious, but I'm going to prove it to people – I hope, probably not, probably everybody will say they're fucking bugs, but I'm going to keep on trying to hammer away because I'm telling you the truth, guys. I'm not making this shit up. I, I, can, I can see these, and by the way, when they get super close, even with the camera, you can see them with your eyeballs. Um, you know, at very close up, you can see them, and, and this is not to say the ones in the house I can see totally with my eyes, but the ones outside uh, with infrared, you can only see them that way. But if they get super close to the camera in your face, you get a glimpse of them quickly, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, and do you still have the trouble with the uh, sort of the jamming where it was doing stuff to the film when you're trying to yeah. produce the film? Yeah, absolutely. But I've learned how to cut around it a little bit better. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a strobe. Um, it's, it's some kind of strobe because like if you were at my house, I could show you the raw footage and you could watch the, the, the weird part is that you can film it, you can upload it with the camera, and, and you can then import it into iMovie, and you can watch the raw footage as is, and you can see the entire thing. You can see the strobes, but somehow it plays. But when you try to export it, the, the, the strobes that are happening basically corrupt the export. But yeah, uh, th those things are still happening, it's still draining the camera, bat fresh batteries within a minute. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. I was thinking of trying to build like a mini Faraday cage for the camera to see if that did anything. But yeah, that's well, happening. Interesting. We will definitely be dropping by to see this because it's uh, fascinating. Is it, is it increasing? Maybe last question. Is this increasing the, the amount of activity you're having compared to, say, even a couple of months ago? You know, Grant, try to put this simply. I think that they're teaching me about something. So I think they're taking me in phases. And so basically the first phase was about, hey, we're here. Look us at, look us, look at us in the sky. Look at all the different crazy shit we can do with, uh, you know, shooting uh, fireballs and Tinkerbell lights and, and all these kind of weird things that they do. Then they, then, then, you know, and by the way, all the way through the legitimate contact the, you, the military stuff is, goes on 24-7. They could care less if I'm here or not. They're here. 
And those craft, those fake stars are in the sky. They're moving around in the sky. The or some of the orbs are with these military. And plus they have these other back engineered craft that I see every night and film every night. There are three kinds. There's this UFO kind with a long arm with a light on the end. That it, the arm extends about 20 feet in the air and it goes in a full 24 circle as it's flying. Then there's the double Christmas tree military craft, which literally looks like a board with two outlines of Christmas trees, red, double red ones, and then a red and green one. So that's 24-7. That's constant. That never changes. It's the same as every night. It's there. They're doing something. The military planes fly in every five minutes from dusk till dawn. Same plane every five minutes. The, the, the real guys, uh, they started like with, out with a bang. That happened eight months ago. It went for seven months. And then what happened is they started to tra trail off in terms of be coming to visit me with the craft. But then what happened was, is this whole paranormal energy in the house thing started to increase, where I started to then see orbs all through the house, these smoke beans flying around, these golden energy dot things. So that's gotten up and up and up. So what I think they're doing is they're basically saying, Christopher, it's not about craft. It's not about any, it's only about consciousness and energy. It's only about understanding I'm a visual person, so they wanted to teach me visually. See, Christopher, now you can see. Every night when you go to bed in your house, there's conscious energy dots all around you that are communicating with you. There's orbs. There's mist beings. We live in this world where we're surrounded by beings 24-7, everyone. It's this soup that we swim in. That's the physical world, not the one you live in. So they're teaching me. They're saying, it's not about UFOs. It's about consciousness. It's about learning how to direct your consciousness, take ownership, and also seeing visually and physically that we're not alone. We're here with all these different beings that are physically right next to you and me all the time. Uh, see with your eyes, Christopher. They're teaching me about that. So that's what I think is going on is they're basically saying enough with the UFOs. Now it's on to learning what really the, the deal is, which is, it's this other thing, consciousness, energy, teaching me so I can visually see it and then say to people, hey, this is what's happening. It's not, it has nothing to do with me. This is the way the world is. This is, what, this is what we live in. It's not this physical material world that we live in. And we can create with our consciousness and change the course of things with consciousness if we take ownership that we have the power that it's a real thing, that it's physical, that we're all sort of connected in this soup with these other beings, wh whoever they come from. So that's what's going on. They still show up, but they don't show up like they were hammering me for like seven months every day. Now they're like the UFO thing, it's, it's sparse, but the, but the other stuff is 24 seven and yeah, increasing. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Well, I, I appreciate your message. It matches the message that I sort of got about five years ago. And yeah. I'm honored to have gotten to know you. And I think you've added a lot to my story and my understanding of how things work. And your honesty and your uh, sort of in-depth sort of love for people in the universe. I, I just, I mean, I, I can listen to you for hours. It's just absolutely oh, fascinating. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Grant, so much. Grant, I just want to say again, you and Desta are, uh, you know, these are big words, but I really believe them to be true trailblazers. You guys have nailed it 100%. You're spot on with everything that you're doing. You're doing amazing, profound work. I only was led in this direction um, by these experiences, and I feel that you and Desta were brought into my life. Our, my, you know, I'm just in awe of the work that you and Desta are doing. You guys are doing amazing, amazing stuff. And so I love watching the, your, everything that you do. Uh, you're just, it's just right on. It's just so great. Thank you for, for allowing me to be a part of this experience with you. Okay, and thank you for allowing us to help you get your message out because um, – yeah. I'm, I'm eager to do whatever we can to be a part of your mission and to help because I really believe that, that you're on to something and uh, we'll do whatever we can to, to help you do whatever we've got to do. Thank you so much. I hope I didn't sound too goofy. I, 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 I'm just trying to make sense of it as we go through. So thank you again. Okay. Beautiful.
Awesome. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, <clears throat> back again to make another video. Um, I just want to say really up front, thank you so much to everyone who's watched the video, commented on the video, good or bad. It's, it's uh, you know, it's not about whether uh, you believe me or not, or any of this. It's just about the discussion. And what they're telling me is that it's not about video, it's not about, although, listen, believe me, I'm with you on that. I want to get great video. <laughs> I want to get kick-ass video that's amazing, that's, uh, but it's, it's, it's just about the discussion. Um, and by having that discussion, whether you believe it or not, the videos are good or not, uh, that opens the doorway in terms of consciousness. It plants a seed. And, oh look, there we go, there's another hawk. Look at that. There's a beauty right there. I hope you can see that. Anyway, so that, that, by doing that, by doing that, it, uh, it plants the seed of, of this whole subject. And consciousness is everything. It's the key to physicality change. It's the key to understanding we're not alone. It's, it's, it's everything. And believe me, I'm no expert at all, not even close. But, you know, what they're telling me is that 99.9.9.9 of the natural world, what we call the natural world, is not the natural world. 99.9.9.9% of the natural physical world is consciousness and energy. And that 1% of a percent of a percent is the physical reality we live in. And, you know, they know I'm a visual person. And they've done something really amazing, given me an amazing gift that up until two months ago I didn't have. And so basically, long story short is, you know, up to two months ago, you know, yes, I was seeing the UFOs and the orbs flying out of the UFOs and and filming and all these different things but with my eyes I was seeing those things but what I've come to learn is there are many different types of orbs and energies and stuff so basically I was seeing the UFOs with my eyes and I was seeing the orbs that would come out of those UFOs and visit with me with my eyes but but that was the ex you know extent of it and and all the other stuff I've described that was the extent of it uh, I wasn't really seeing anything in the house you know, or having those kind of paranormal experiences and that kind of thing. But basically what happened is two months ago, uh, I'm looking out the window of our bedroom at night around 11 o'clock at night at our garden and I start to see these flashes of dark things flying all around in our garden. And, and that went on for like about a week and then a couple of weeks later, I, those things turned into hundreds and hundreds of orbs that are not the same orb that... I'm seeing with the UFO stuff, and those orbs are flying from the garden inside of our house, uh, everywhere around me in the house, and and then that turned into seeing orbs everywhere in the house, seeing these mist, this mist, uh, smoke, energy that literally looks like uh, long lines of twisting, turning smoke with the orbs uh, flying everywhere. Uh, like all over the house, all around me, kind of like, you know, 24-7, disappearing, reappearing, like, but it's a 24-7 thing. And then with that, I'm, you know, I started seeing these like pops of golden and red light and green light with sparkles all around them. And that went on for a couple weeks. And then so basically all of that has turned into now it's a 24-7 thing. So basically what I'm telling you is that if I'm in a room during the daytime, or uh, if I'm in a room during the daytime and there's a little shadow, on command, I'm seeing all of this stuff. I'm seeing all the golden energy pop, light, red light, sparkles, the orbs flying everywhere, this mist, gold, this, this uh, smoke mist all around me. It's like, a, it's like vapor, but it's conscious. 
it, 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 it's conscious and I'll tell you why. So this is now 24-7. So basically what I have to do is I can be in normal eyesight where I'm just basically sitting watching TV with my wife uh, at night, let's say. And if I want to shift my consciousness just a little, like do kind of like... Um, kind of like a soft eyes kind of thing, kind of adjust my conscious just a little bit. All of a sudden, poof, I see this like like a mist thing, and I'll see like an orb zip by, and then I see like a little sparkle thing. And then basically when I go to bed at night, when I turn the lights off, whether I adjust my consciousness or not, it, it, they're there. And it's all around me 24-7 till dawn, uh, like I said, during the daytime, if I'm if I'm like riding the treadmill in the morning and I and it's a little uh, dark in the room, they're there. If I, you know, so basically, <laughs> I'm doing this ex experiment every night. So I'll lie down in bed, and all of this is going on, and and basically I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing orbs everywhere. This mist, smoky stuff everywhere in front of me, kind of circling around my face. Do Look, there's a there's a hawk right there. Look at that, beautiful, and uh, like dots of golden like light going pop, and then like sparkle, and like and it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's 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 all around me, and so basically I'm sitting there, uh, uh, lying down, and I'll be like, you know, love you, love you, energy being family, and I'll like lift. I'll put my hand out, right, and then. Um, you know, it'll start to gather around my hand. And it'll start to gather to the point where I'm looking at my fingers and I start to not be able to see my fingers. I start to have to like literally uh, check to see if my fingers are there because I can feel my fingers, but some kind of energy, darker energy with these like little glittery sparkle things is covering up like a portion of my fingers and I can't see my fingers. I can't see like I can see my hand but like a portion of my fingers are gone and I have to literally like check to see if my fingers are there it's the weirdest thing uh, and I've done this multiple is this so this is now t for me every single night you know and like I said during the daytime if, it, if I'm in a room with some shadow and I want to adjust my consciousness they're there but if it's nighttime and the lights are off I don't even have to adjust my consciousness so there so so what does all that mean so, you know, if you buy what I'm telling you, if, 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 if you believe what I'm telling you, and, and again, I want you to believe, I would love you to believe, because this has nothing to do with just me, it's all of us. This is the, nat this is the natural state of everything. And so when people, when people talk about, oh, uh, search for alien life, and they're coming from there and here, I want to scream at the top of my lungs and go, guys, not only are we not alone, we're surrounded at all times by all these different things, these energy beings and, and, and these light beings and these smoke beings and, and these sparkle lot be, dot beings. And, you know, I don't know where they come from uh, in terms of like where their original origin is, but I know that they're here with us all the time, 24 seven. And guys, when I'm looking at this at night, I'll look and I'll see all these beings, they're everywhere, like all these kind of like, you know, what I, like what I described, they're everywhere. And in between those beings are this purple reddish, it looks like static on it, you know, a snow on a TV, um, you know, the, the white and black snow on a TV, but just imagine that red and purple. There's all of that kind of energy kind of like doing this uh, in between all these beings. And so, I'm so, so, so that, so I'm seeing that every single night. And like I said, so when I lie down on, in the bed and I'm putting my hand out and I'm like, love you energy beings, will you come touch my hand? And they start to manifest literally around my hand, around my fingers, to the point where a portion of my finger I can't see. And it occurred to me last night, I thought, is my hand disappearing? I can feel my hand, but no. Uh, the being, whatever being that is, is in front and their mass is so thick and dark that I can literally not see a portion of my fingers. And I can see like the tips of my fingers. And by the way, when I do that, when I hold my hand out and I go, love you energy beings, and they're kind of everywhere and they start to gather around my fingers, I swear to God to you, 
little sparks of electricity are coming off the tips of my fingers and I don't know if that's coming from me or them. And then, and then, and then the, the mist is everywhere and then that dark sort of energy, golden, purple, whatever it is, is in front of my hands and like part of my fingers disappear. But I can feel them. So what I'm trying to say is, is that we're not alone at all, not even close. We're surrounded by all of this energy and these beings and, and, and when, I, when I say to them in my head, love you energy beings, come touch my hand and they start to gather around my hand and, and around my body, like my face, they'll start to kind of multiply like more around my, they're conscious, they hear me. And, and another thing is like, so when I'm doing this, I can literally feel a cool, soft breeze around my fingertips. And I can literally feel, it's almost like a down feather type of softness, like sort of on my skin, and a cool soft breeze. And so I'm seeing all this stuff everywhere. And guys, that, I wasn't seeing this before two months ago. And so what, what I asked them what this all is, because it sort of occurred to me, and so I don't know if they sent it to me, or if I just put it together from being here and experiencing this, but they wanted to teach me, Christopher, it's not about UFOs, we did that to get your attention. Everything is energy and consciousness. That's the physical world that we exist in. There's no difference between the paranormal world and the UFO world, it's all one and the same. We occupy the same space that physical human spirits occupy. You know, so I think at night what I'm seeing is I'm think I asked them that. I said, well, what am I seeing? Am I seeing just human spirits? Am I seeing energy beings? Or they said you're seeing a mixture of both. You're seeing human spirits flying all around. You're seeing our true form of who we are. We're with you. Uh, and I don't know exactly what the smoke mist energy beings are, but, uh, you know, it's been pretty amazing. Uh, all right, I'm gonna make I'm gonna cut this short and I'm gonna do a follow-up video. Okay, I'll, I'll, just because people are walking up and I want to kind of have some privacy. Okay, all right, love you. Bye. Okay, guys, I am back. Sorry, I'm just walking around and there's some other people and I just wanted to have some privacy and I kind of look like a, a bozo talking to myself walking down the trail with people walking by me. Anyways, um, so yeah, so you know. I, God, I wish that I could take you all in my arms and bring you into my space and, and, and have you see all of this energy and all of this conscious beings and spirits and, you know, I'm not seeing like physical bodies, I'm seeing like orbs, uh, I'm seeing these, the mist, sort of misty, conscious mist that's like a smoke being, I'm seeing these energy beings. And the energy beings, they literally look like dots of golden, red, green, some purple in it, and then, you know, and sparkles, all like, like white electric -y type sparkles around. Um, and they're conscious, and they're reacting to me. I mean, I'm literally saying in my head, love you energy beings, come touch my hand, and as I put my hand out, they gather more around my hand, and my face, and my body. You know, so... We're not alone, not even close, you know, and, and they're here with us all the time. And, and, and what they've told me is, you know, that it's like worlds within a world within a world. It's like there are many different worlds that exist within this space here, within our space um, on Earth. I don't know if it's just Earth or, or everywhere, but, but think of it like you know, like us and like animals going down to bugs, going down to, oh, there's another hawk up there. Uh, going down to, um, you know, like uh, germs or whatever. It's just like that all exists here with us and it's all sort of like uh, smaller and smaller and smaller, like microcosmic worlds with living with, you know, hand in hand beside each other. That's exactly what this is. So, you know, I'm sure that there are beings that live on other planets that come here. Of course there are. Everybody has seen it, documented it. That's the whole disclosure thing. But, but there are also many, many beings here with us here. And I don't know if 
that space that they live in, that paranormal UFO other world that I've been gifted to be able to see now on command. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I don't know if that space basically is, you know, I, everything is connected and everything is a part of everything and there's no separating that. There's no separation, literally. Um, and I don't know if, you know, when you're in that space as an entity, whether you're human in spirit form or a being in that form, if, if in a blink of an eye you can be another planet and here, I don't know about any of that, but it's probably possible. Um, but I know that now, uh, you know, at almost, you know, the middle of my life, uh, I have never seen that in before in my life up to two months ago, and now I see it. I, it, I can't turn it off. I mean, I can sort of turn it off. I can, I can consciously not focus on it. But if I shift my focus even a little bit, there, it's there, and it's 24/7 on command. You know, and I don't know if it can be filmed. It probably can. I'm going to try to get a full spectrum camera to see if it can be filmed. But um, I don't know. I, I've seen other people capture what I'm seeing on video and film. Uh, I've seen that on YouTube. So I'm assuming it can. But I just wanted to send a message of love to everybody that we, you are not alone in your little, in your house, your giant house, your big house, your space, wherever you are, you're not alone. You're with loving, conscious beings that if they wanted to hurt me, they could have a million zillion times at any moment. And I have not been hurt at all. In fact, I've been helped. I have been cared for. My little being that I care for, my little kitty has been cared for. My, my wife has been cared for. It's very important to focus on love and compassion and oneness and, 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 to, and to watch your thoughts. Our thoughts are physical material. What you think inside what you think inside projects to the world as physical material and it manifests for you. So whatever you're thinking inside will literally create, manifest into physical reality what you're thinking inside yourself about yourself and about the world. So it's, I think, really important to focus on love and compassion for yourself, love and compassion for others, love and compassion for, one, for all people, oneness, and to, even when you feel fucked up and shitty, to force a smile and to focus on that and, and take ownership of your thoughts. And when you have bad thoughts or negative thoughts, lasso those motherfuckers up and say, thank you for sharing, but I'm getting rid of you and I'm going to focus on love and compassion. I'm going to focus on I'm blessed. I'm going to focus on I'm alive. And that every single day is a new opportunity to write the story you want to tell. Um, and I know how I sound. I sound like a fucking, uh, you know, one of those gift card things. But I'm telling you guys, this is so real. It's true. It's real. And, I, and, and just for a goof, try it. And try it consistently because that's the key is that they want to see us hold this consistently. So every day, focus on your thoughts. Focus on being kind to yourself. Focus on giving yourself a break. If you make mistakes, if you fuck up, if you do this or do that, give yourself a break to start over. No story has been written about me, you, or any of us. At any given moment, we have the chance to do everything new again and to feel good about ourselves. And feeling good about ourselves and loving ourselves, even if we don't feel like it, is a huge, powerful tool that changes everything uh, in the outer world. And send loving energy to people. And you know what, guys? I What I would love to see happen, and I'm trying to figure out how to do this, and I have a de an idea called the Project for Mother Earth, uh, which I'll share in future videos, but I would like to see all of us somehow put all these different narratives aside. Not that they're not important or valuable. They are, and probably more important than anything I have to say. But what I'm saying is, come together somehow in a physical way to put in action to heal our planet. Not just talk about it and make videos, but to maybe gather together politically 
so that we can look at what they're doing to the skies, look at ways to heal the earth, the physical earth, uh, you know, consciousness marches. And I know everybody is like, ah, fuck that. I don't want to get out of this and this. That sounds like a lot of work or whatever. But honestly, guys, I think we have to do this somehow. Or maybe, you know, maybe a simple way is to just start one minute of the day. Just like for one minute every day, just see yourself, close your eyes, see in your mind's eye the universe, you know, you in, in, in your space where you are or in space and, and, and feel loving good thoughts about yourself. See a golden energy white light coming from the universe, coming down through the cosmos, being sent by all the beings and all the world to love you and sending that energy wave down into your head and see that energy flow over your head and kind of pass over your head, your shoulders, your body, your stomach, your legs, you know, all the way so you're in this bubble of golden energy and all the way past your feet and your butt and, and that energy goes into infinity, healing all of Mother Earth in all four directions, north, south, east and west, and then you cover yourself in that golden energy from north to south, east to west, and inside you see that golden energy, and that golden energy is healing you, loving you, and then after you're done seeing yourself being healed and loved and totally taken care of and healed of anything that you possibly feel needs healing, and you send that energy back to Mother Earth and you cover her in the same way, north to south, east to west, inside and out, outside and you consciously send loving, healing, golden, white light energy. And you do this, and you know what? As goofy as this sounds, it's real. Now, I can't prove it to you. Uh, it sounds like a million and one videos we've see, all seen on YouTube. But I'm telling you guys, it's real. And there's a real power that each one of us has in this conscious energy choice, how we feel inside of ourselves and how we send that energy out. It's a tool. It's a physical tool to create physical change. And so I, my hope is that you take ownership of this power that you have, that we all have, and that we focus our conscious energy towards healing the earth, healing each other, taking care of each other. What are we really going to do about changing this paradigm that we're in? And realizing, hey, there are more of us than them in terms of who want peace and love and connection and abundance and happiness. There are more of us than them. So the power is sitting in our hands and it's not some video game that we're watching that has no consequences. There is real consequences and there is real stuff happening that I'm going to go into in another video that is real and that is, you know, not great. But, but, even though what I'm going to talk to you about and show you in film, video, what they're telling me is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what these others do. It only matters what we do because we have the power to rewrite the whole entire deal in terms of happiness, healing, this beautiful planet being happy and healthy, all beings and all worlds being together as one family forever, and, and taking ownership in a powerful way, and standing at attention, and taking care of each other, and protecting all beings and all worlds that are part of this family of love and compassion, and consciousness, and biocentric point of view, and by the way, all paths lead to God, so that means all points of view that support equal sort of philosophies are all of equal value. Nobody has equal say. There are no gatekeepers. There is nobody who has the, the, the doorway on all truths. We're all in this thing together. And so that's, that's this video. And so the other video will be something else. But at the end of the day, I asked, I asked them, I said, fuck. Is this all of this work? Is it going to be for naught? Because are we fucked anyways? And he said, absolutely not. 100% not. You are good, but you have to take, you know, faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. It's all in the follow through. 
it's enough to have creativity and excitement and get inspiration and synchronicities and see UFOs, but what are you gonna do about it after the fact? When you know better, you better do better. And that's it. And we have the power to do that. Okay, I love you guys with all my heart and soul. I can't tell you how much it means to me that you watch the videos. If you like the videos, great. If you think I'm a total fucking idiot, that's okay too, you know, but the fact that you're participating in this, thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, I mean it with all my heart and soul. I, I, you know, I mean it. I didn't need to do any of this shit, nor well, none of us needed to. So the fact that you're taking your precious time, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm sending you love. I hope you're all well. Take care of yourselves.